There are many characters in our Jensen story, but like I said, only one thing in the body. And the young, enterprising John Jensen is that story. <laughs> now hold it up to that light there if there is any. And should you have to see some droplets for me? yeah welcome back welcome back i hope y'all enjoyed those videos of your boy traveling welcome to the media man live show i am back again i am so excited to be here i have a great topic something that i've been interested in for a while travel and not only travel we're going to talk to the black women you know um i did a lot of research just to inform uh our female counterparts on what to expect when you travel as you guys know as you've seen the video i am a well traveled man i've been to over 46 countries um so i have a lot of experience in this realm i love traveling i enjoy it i do it on a regular regular basis for my job and also for pleasure leisure right and um yeah this i'm very excited to get this show started we have a lot to discuss. And of course, we have our other topics that we discuss as well before we get into the main topic. However, before we get started, let's take care of some business. I need y'all to go over to the Media Man YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe, like, and share this content. I'm telling you, man, we're blowing up, and that's all because of you all. You know, and I appreciate the support. Any cash apps, any super chats that you want to send, uh, just to let me know that you appreciate the content and me doing all this research for our Black uh, women counterparts. This is going to be a great show, and I ho hopefully there's a lot of black women that tune in. Like I said, I have a lot of videos. I have a lot of research. I listen to, uh, I want to say, over about 20 different content creators, black female content creators that regularly travel and live in these different countries. So we're going to talk about traveling to the nicest countries for black women and black people in general, and also the best places for black women to live uh in places you know at first i wanted to tackle this from a perspective of visiting however i know that since there are a lot of uh black men passport bros in particular that are trying to find other countries to live and being that i am a well-traveled man i can tell you that there are some great places all over this world so i figured i would help black women out if they were ever thinking about moving and living in a different country I got some other black women and their videos to explain their experiences from different parts of the world. This is going to be an amazing live stream. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I wanted to wait until I got a little bit more established so I can get my female uh, followership up. And as of right now, we just hit 25% of my uh, subscriber base on uh, Facebook and also on YouTube being women. So one out of four of our uh, subscribers are actually women and i'm very uh, appreciative and thankful for that you know hopefully i'm glad that a lot of women see some uh, value in this content you know like i said this is a, a a space from a different perspective i'm just here to provide clarity and context to these conversations and hopefully y'all rock with it and looking at the subscriber count we're closing in on 7000 and i see you guys are actually rocking with it so I, I greatly appreciate it god bless you all and thank you for your support right 
So before we get started again, make sure you hit the link to uh, Tej Hanley. I don't know if you guys seen the commercial beforehand, but let me share something with y'all before we get started. I was so excited. I'm starting to feel like a real content creator, right? <laughs> let me show you all this real quick. So I'm starting to get these notifications from Tej Hanley. It says you have a pending Tej Hanley conversion. Keep it up. Basically, what that means is people are purchasing the products based off of my link. So I've received over six. Well, I think it's up to six now. Yeah, it's about six uh, conversion emails basically telling me that people are using my link to purchase these products. And I appreciate y'all support. As you guys can see, like I said, my skin, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing very well in the skin department. That's all because of Teens Hanley. And I have oily skin. I had to go to the dermatologist to get this figured out. And uh, when I first started getting my skin together, I was actually a Tej Hanley member before I got sponsored by them, right? So it's definitely working in my favor. And I want you guys to experience the same uh, results that I have in regards to the skincare. So please keep it up. Keep, uh, you know, using my link to purchase those products. I was just so excited. Like this is a new realm for me, you know? Um, I, I, everything is like exciting to me in these YouTube spaces, you know, and uh, I'm just very grateful that you guys are using the products and you see, you know, me being the product, you know, ambassador, you know, if I was coming up here looking like, you know, uh, Rice Krispies all over my face, y'all be like, hell no, that stuff don't work, but it actually works. And I appreciate y'all support for purchasing it, man. I mean, y'all don't know how, how good that feels. Like I was sitting there at work, and I got the email. I was like, conversion? Like, what the hell's going on? And I looked and I had to check my account. I was like, oh, wow. You know, and the commissions are going up. So I appreciate it. Thank you all for supporting uh, me and also Teach Hanley. You know, they are very uh, Black people friendly, you know, from what I've noticed. And uh, I was happy to be one of their affiliates. So appreciate Teach Hanley for that. And keep going ahead and uh, purchasing those products using my link. Thank you all for your support. All right, I had to get uh, take care of some business. Man, I was excited. So let me get to some of these comments before we get into some statistics in regards to why I'm doing this live stream, right? Oh, we got my man in here, Cerebral Inquirer, Keen Barracuda. What's good, good brother? Good to see you in here. Chelsea's live line. I seen you over there. This is your first time here. Welcome, ma'am. I appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We got Mona D in the building. I caught some of that good live stream that you were doing. Uh Man, I, I was impressed. Uh, Mona D, you're going to go places. Uh, it says, Hel hello, medium man and everyone. Appreciate your support. And thank you for reminding people to like the video. We got my guy in here, Prime VA 757 What's good, good brother? Good to see you in here. Oh, we okay. Y'all know each other. I like to see that. I like to see people in the comment section. Y'all love it over here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mona said great content over here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, you're a real content creator. Yeah, it's, it's shocking. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a content creator. Wow, <laughs> man, we got the good brother Jay Fleming in the house. Let me tell y'all, I was actually uh blessed with the opportunity to get on Jay Fleming's 1,000 subscriber live stream. If you guys don't know, Jay Fleming just hit 1,000 subscribers, and he was gracious enough to let me come on his platform and speak a little bit prior to uh, me and my fiance get back. From uh from dinner, so um I, I I appreciate your support, good brother. It's only up from here, like I told you before, man. So I'm I'm glad to see your growth uh, as a man in particular, man. Like we've been rocking with each other for a while, so thank you for your support, good brother. You always know you got a home over here, right? Y'all support Jay Fleming. Subscribe to his uh his channel, man. If you got your link uh queued up, Jay, go ahead and drop your link in the description or in the comment section. Appreciate that, brother. Gene, what's good, brother? Finally here on time. What's good, brother? Can't wait to see what you got in store for us. Oh, man, it's going to be a good show. This is a show, like I said, geared uh, specifically towards black women. However, this will benefit black men as well, right? Because you guys have, you know, sisters, you guys have daughters, you know, you guys have mothers that may want to travel. We're going to touch, touch on the older women traveling as well. Um, so, yeah, so this is going to be uh, informative to you all as well. So this uh, is going to hit all area. So I appreciate your support, good brother. Always over here. Good to see you here on time. Thank you, bro. <laughs> uh, Mona said, you're welcome. Thank you for stopping by and supporting me. Absolutely. No problem. My guy, BLJ in the building. What's good, good brother? Good to see you in here. Thank you, bro. 
Vanessa, we me and Vanessa have been rocking with each other for a while. She's uh, my uh, instant messenger consultant. When I need some information on a particular topic that I'm unaware of, such as uh, what was it, the 600 pound life people? <laughs> I don't know if I was supposed to be laughing at that, Vanessa. I watched those shows and I was supposed, I was trying to be sentimental and sympathetic, but it's tough. <laughs> Lord, I had to repent. I had to ask God for forgiveness. And that's all your fault, Vanessa. So thank you for that. Now. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, for the well wishes. Um, I got a, another announcement coming up. I have two other sponsorships that just got approved. I'm just waiting for the paperwork to get done. And you guys are going to be shocked uh, <laughs> because the content is uh, pretty good over here. They review my content and they were like, yeah, this is a guy that we don't mind supporting too. Uh, big companies that you guys will be like, wow, well, you know, this is crazy. But yeah, we, we doing big things over here. So appreciate your support. Got Barbara Inc. in the building. Man, that dude is holding it down in the comment section on Facebook. I see you liking the 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 uh, you know, the, the posts, commenting. Man, bro, I appreciate it. He says, super proud of you, bro. I absolutely love the movement you've been getting. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it, man. All comes with time. You just got to be patient, you know? People will rock with good content. Content. That's what I'm starting to learn in these spaces. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, you may get a little bit farther if you start to partner with certain uh, groups or certain people. However, I wanted to cultivate this platform basically on my own, you know, so I can be like kind of a, a caveat to the norm, right? Or, you know, something that's not, you know, in the norm in these spaces, right? You know, so hopefully you guys are enjoying it, you know, and rocking with the uh, the content. And I'm seeing it, you know, like I said, we almost had a, a 7,000 subscribers. If you guys don't know, I hit, um, man, Jay was around. I think you actually came up on the stream. I think I hit a thousand subscribers in October. Right. And I was like shocked that, that uh, I hit that, you know, I hit a thousand in uh, October and then I got monetized at the end of January. I think the third week of January. So to be almost at 7,000 subscribers, in such a short amount of time is amazing. And, and uh, I attribute a lot of that success to uh, Dennis Sperling. Dennis Sperling actually shared uh, two of my videos on his panel, actually featured me in a couple of live streams. And I gained a huge amount of followers from him. I also gained a lot of followers from uh, Instagram as well, from a uh, post that went viral that I'm going to share with you guys as well. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But yeah, so I appreciate you know all the support. And uh, yeah, it's only upward from here, bro. So appreciate it, brother. <laughs> yeah, Vanessa, it's your fault. <laughs> uh, Jay says, okay, brother, just make sure I'm invited on the private jet. Oh, absolutely, brother. You be up front. You know what I'm saying? If you want to sit in the pilot's cockpit, you know, I got you. You know, this is no problem. It's on me, brother. <laughs> we we in there. You know how it is. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, BLJ said, Theo Coop and Uncle D sent me. Yeah, Theo's the man. I, I, I miss his... Um, his live stream this morning because I was at work. But uh, yeah, I try and make sure that I support Theo as much as I can. Uh, that dude is amazing, you know, with the sound bites on his uh, soundboard. And then also the way that he keeps things in, into perspective when he breaks down those videos. Like I said, if you guys want to want to have a good time, you know, early in the morning, please go watch Theo Coop's live stream at 7 a.m. I believe, yeah, 7 a.m. Houston time. So, yes, man, that dude is definitely entertaining. I'm, I swear Theo was built for this. He has a voice and he has a presence, right? He was built for YouTube, I'm telling you. So head over to uh, Theo Coop, do better podcasts. You will definitely enjoy yourself. I've laughed. I, I Theo's platform, that's the most that I've laughed of any content creator. I mean, it's hilarious. Like, this dude is amazing. So, and it's also informative. So head over to Theo Coop. And subscribe to his page as well. Oh man, this dude is is crazy. He probably he probably sleep right now, but he'd probably make his way over there uh, in a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, um, man, I got some. <laughs> this is gonna be funny. So there, you know, what's funny? I got a lot of comments uh, in the inbox on Facebook from a lot of men, and they were asking me why am I doing a, a show just basically geared towards black women and travel? Well. You know I'm a stats guy, so let me lay some stats on you just to understand why I'm focused on black women and why black women travel. So according to the U.S. State Department, there are 151 million passports 
in circulation from 1989 to 2022. As you guys know, in the United States alone, there's 330 million, um, 330 million people uh, living in the United States, right? So 151 million. So that's about a little over what, uh, a little less than half of the population with U.S. passports holding passports in circulation, right? And also, according to Forbes magazine, the average U.S. traveler is a 47-year-old woman. And whether women travel with their partners, their families, friends, solo, or in groups, 80% of all travel decisions are made by women, right? In 2021, one publication estimated that women who see travel as both a reward and escape would spend over $125 billion dollars on vacations. Wow. <laughs> In the U.S., women dominate leisure travel by a 63% to 37% uh, ratio over men. Worldwide, there is a global similar skew, with 64% of global travelers being female. Crazy, right? Versus 36% male, according to RV and Playa. <clears throat> They represent 54% of the travelers with annual incomes over $250,000, according to MMGY Global. Women outlive men and often use inherited wealth for retirement travel. That comes from that divorce and men dying earlier than uh, women. But, you know, I see y'all capital capitalizing on that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> women also tend to travel, tend to carefully plan and save for vacations, right? So if you're asking me why I'm interested in doing a live stream basically focused on Black women and travel is because of those statistics. Women travel more than men, right? And I know the hot topic in these spaces is the passport bros, but as I stated before, and as most of the passport bros would actually tell you, is that they are the minority, minority when they travel. But like I stated before, if we're talking about the marriage aspect, any percentage of black men that are leaving the country to go find wives in other countries, it directly affects black women because of the fact that black women are married at a 27% clip and black men are married at a 33% clip, right? There are 550,000 more married, 556,000 more married black men than black women. So when you remove 5%, 6%, 10% of black men, and they start to travel overseas and move their resources to other countries to find wives, under countries to find wives, that directly affects black women because we marry black women at an 85% clip. So I'm not minimizing the amount of passport bro brothers that are leaving. It's the fact that women travel more. However, they are, and our black women travel more and they are less likely to get married in the United States. So basically what I'm doing this live stream for is to uncover some, uh, maybe some rumors and some truths. If there are some black women that want to go overseas to find love, because it can happen. And maybe the minority, however, there are certain countries that you could probably go to and certain things that you need to understand when you go overseas, if you're looking for love, but I, hopefully I can clear all this stuff up with the uh, the information that I have, and this will gain, you know, give black women some insight in regards to the countries that are um, the most receiving of black women and where you guys will have the, the, the best time and you'll be able to live in peace and harmony, right? So yeah, that's what travel is for, you know, being a foreigner, right? So yeah, so this is going to be a very informative uh, live stream. So that is why I'm doing a whole show on black women, because like I said, I take care of black women. I love black women. So there's no need for me to keep the 25% of black women that focus on my content and just focus my content on men, right? Like I said, if this turns you off, you're going to have to get used to it if you're going to be here. Because like I said, I'm probably going to do a couple of shows about men and like important topics. And then I'm going to shift and focus on black women and also women in general, right? Because like I said, I take care of black women. So it is what it is, right? So hopefully uh, you guys continue to rock with me. So let's continue with these comments. Let's see here. Okay, got that one. Uh, <laughs> Blue Exodus, Mr. Bobby Wright said, Mona everywhere. Uh, hey, he's the best. She's the best. <laughs> Appreciate it, brother. He says, uh, best of luck. It's the first time I'm seeing you over here, I believe. 
Uh, no, Blue Exodus, that name sounds familiar. I think I've seen you in other spaces, good brother. But welcome. Thank you for coming in. All right. So now that we got the uh, the stats out of the way, so let me uh, get you guys up to speed in regards to what's been happening with this whole stepfather thing. <coughs> let me get rid of this real quick. <clears throat> so as you guys know, I did a couple of videos on stepfathers, right? Very respectful. Uh, in that right. And I also put out a short a while back and it was based off of a Kendra G video from a young lady who was explaining the fact that she doesn't like introducing men to her children until six months have passed. Right. And that was the most unlikely short that I thought would go viral. And particularly it went viral on, on Instagram. My Instagram following is very small compared to my other platforms, but this one, it must've touched uh, a lot of people, right? And the mo for the majority, everybody understood what I was saying, but there were some comments in regards to, uh, well, why is, you know, you talking about this and there's a uh, men out there that will take a woman with their kids and things of that nature. But first I'm going to play the video that I, uh, released a while back and the one that's going viral. And then I also have a couple of other videos. One is from a, from a most recent Kendra G show, and then also some advice for single mothers who are in the dating market, right? So let's go ahead and watch this first video. They're all linked together. And I may stop it a couple of times here and there just so I can give my two cents. So I just want to explain a little bit further in regards to this stepfather thing, right? So here we go. I have four children. All about the same man? My last three are. Who would you say to the guy that might be cautious because you have four kids? Most men I date have no children. Most guys look at single mothers as recreational use, basically meaning I'm only going to have sex with you, but I'm not going to commit to you because you have kids. All right. So let me explain that whole recreational use um, comment. There were some women on there that I, I'm pretty sure they were offended by that, but this is just a term that I've heard in these spaces. The first time I've actually heard it was... Uh, on Fresh and Fit, I believe Myron said it, but me as a man, I already understood this. I just didn't have the words such as Myron uh, conveyed to, to, I guess, uh, describe what men view most single mothers is. This is not all. This is just the majority. And if you go to the Instagram page, the Media Man Instagram page, you don't have to ask me. You just look in the comments and you see what the guys are saying. And that's basically what I'm trying to convey. And I'm trying to relay to women that, hey, there are a lot of men who don't view single mothers as marriage material because of the fact that they have kids. However, those men will sleep with single mothers because of the fact that they, you know, they may be open to sex because they already know that you have sex because you have kids, right? So that's what I was trying to convey with that whole recreational use uh, comment. I didn't mean to offend. I just wanted to make sure I put it in perspective and also give Myron some credit for... Uh, for using that phrase to where I caught it on one of his uh, shows, right? So let's continue. When you're dating me, you're getting to know me. I'm only telling you about my children. You shouldn't even be meeting my children for the first six months. All right. So you see what she said, right? She said, you won't even be meeting my kid for, until for the first six months, right? That's a long time. So this is what I said in response to that. And I was trying to help uh, single mothers understand that this is how most men think. Here we go. And one thing that I notice that a lot of single mothers do is that they'll keep the kids away from the guy because you don't want to introduce your kids to every man that you're dating. But you have to understand the fact that you're having sex, sex with this guy. So he's getting used to you. He don't know anything about your kids. So if let's say you wait a year and then you're like, okay, now I'm going to introduce you to my kids. He don't know them kids. So you're like, man, this is too much. I'm going to just go ahead and bail. All right. So a lot of people was like, what? What women, what women are thinking that they're going to wait, you know, a year to introduce their kids? You know, you, you're reaching with that. But I got some for that ass. It uh, <laughs> also, ladies, I'm going to just, here's another nugget. If there is a man who is dating a single mother, he's not sitting there saying, oh, my God. I can't wait till she introduces me to her kids. Like, no, he's getting all of you. Y'all are having sex. Y'all having fun. And if you have this standard, I'm not going to 
introduce my kids to you until six months later. Like I said, he's going to be used to you. So he's not looking forward to meeting your kids. He's just having fun for the most part. And again, let me reiterate this. I'm not saying all men think like this, but enough of them do. The majority of men think like this. So that's why I wanted to give a little bit of advice and some from some previous videos that I did in regards to this topic. But before we get to that, this is for the women who said I was uh, reaching when I said that there are single mothers saying that I won't introduce you to my kids until a year later. Let's go and listen to what this young lady has to say. Let me just ask you, because this is something that they will say. You have six kids. What would you say to the man that's cautious of dating you because you have six kids? I mean, my kids shouldn't even really matter if I if you dated me because, number one, I'm not a person that instantly bring you around my kids anyway. We got a bad, you know, we feel be like, at least be around each other. You know, a lot of people just jump into a relationship and they instantly bring people around their kids. I'm not that person. We got a vibe at least for like a year or two. Or what what she say? What she what what does he just say? We got a vibe for what? Hold on, let's go back. What she say? We got a vibe at least for like a year or two or something oh, like that. But a year. I'm or not going to be a person that. Yeah. You need. To, all right. So <laughs> now this was recent. That young woman said we got a vibe for at least a year or two. Think about that. Man in a whole relationship with a woman for two years. Ain't never met her kids. Six of them at that. This young lady in, in particular, she has two baby daddies, right? She has four, four, four children that are under the age of four years old, with the youngest being nine months old. Six children total. And also, to add fuel to the fire, she's still having sex with the nine month old's father. And that's another issue that a lot of men have when they deal with single mothers because the father is always going to be in the picture. And most likely, he is still hitting that thing. <laughs> so for her to come on there and say that, yeah, you know, Kendra asked her, when was the last time you had sex? And she was like, maybe like a week ago or something like that. And Kendra asked her, is he an option? And he, she was like, well, no, that's my baby daddy. And she was like, which one is that? And she's like, well, that's the nine months old's uh, dad. So that is another caveat that men are concerned about. When they get with the single mother, particularly a single mother with young kids, we have to deal with the, 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 you know, the thought process of thinking that you're going to backside and go back to him and have sex because it happens. Ladies, I've lived, women have been very vocal on social media. They said that they went on dates with guys that are trying to court them. And once the guy drops him off, they'll go ahead and call the baby father, go ahead and knock it on down. And they do that because they want to keep their body count low. Men know. And the only reason why we know this stuff is because women are very loud on social media. And y'all swear that we're not listening. We listen to this stuff, right? So all I'm saying is if you're going to put the information out there, don't expect men not to apply it to the dating market. And also for single mothers, if there are women out there who are speaking for you, and they are saying that this is what we do, it doesn't help you to be quiet and try and dispel this stuff. If you're going to sit there and act unbothered, which is a phrase that a lot of our women like to use, then this is going to hurt you on the dating market because men are going to apply it to all women. Oh, you got a baby daddy? Yeah, you definitely letting him, you know, hit that thing, you know, as soon as I take you out and then you go back home, right? Y'all need to think about that. But before we move on, I gave some advice from a, a, a previous video for single mothers. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand what I'm saying here. Right. So let's continue to be very intentional with your dating purpose. Say that shit up front. I am looking to get married. Are you on the same page as me? And sometimes guys will lie to try and get the booty. And that's where the vetting process comes in. Do you have those mentors in place? Do you have your father to see if his words line up with his actions before you hop into bed with a guy. Nobody is saying that you you women aren't attractive, but if you don't have an issue with, and you just want to have sex and you don't want to get married, these guys in these spaces will gladly accommodate you. All right. So I was just making sure that women understood how this vetting process works, right? And what I see and what I learned from being in this space for almost five years now 
is that women tend to get most of their dating advice from their experiences with dealing with men, with men who they've slept with. And if you're doing that, you're wrong, right? You need some men who will be your mentors that you haven't slept with, right? Because if you get your information from guys that, that you have slept with or you're that are trying to sleep with you, then it's not going to work because they, because they have their own interests in mind, right? So they're going to tell you what you want to hear in, instead of what you need to hear, right? So that's why you need your fathers, your brothers, your uncles, uh, some mentors that can give you some straight, unadulterated advice to where they're not uh, they're not compromised by their own wants and needs, right? And like I said, it doesn't help when women get all of their adv or advice or knowledge from men from the guys that they slept with. And like I said, if you go into the dating market and that's all you have and you don't have any strong, respectful men that you can confide in to give you those jewels and tell you the truth in regards to if a guy, if a guy is not, you know, if he's pulling your chain or pulling your leg in regards to what he's saying, then you're wrong because you're going to get finessed, right? Very simple. And like I said, guys will gladly accommodate you in regards to sex, right? If you think that you're a single mother and you're going to go onto the dating market and you're going to convince a man to be with you after you had sex with him for, for, almost two years. And then you're like, okay, we've been having sex and chilling with each other for two years. Now I'm going to introduce you to my six kids. <laughs> that sounds crazy to even say six kids. And he's supposed to be like, oh yeah, come on. I'm ready to meet these, these buckaroos. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. No, he's going to find some way to get out of that relationship. Be like, you know what? This is just not working for me. You know, I'm going to just go ahead and let you, you know, go ahead and raise those kids. And now you're looking at him as an F boy, which he may be. But like I said, you have to be smarter than that. And I understand why women don't want men to meet their kids because it's a safety issue. I understand it completely. There is no, uh, I mean, there's no misunderstanding as to why you keep your kids from strange men, right? But how is he a strange man if you're having sex with him, right? So, those two coincide. So if you decide to have sex with a man and then you're going to continue to do that for a year or two and you're like, man, I don't trust this guy around my kids, but you trust him with your womb, you trust him with your health and safety, right? I mean, somebody can answer that for me in the comment section. What sense does that make? So if you're going to keep your kids away from a guy that you're having sex with for a extended period of time, then, hey, you may be putting yourself at risk for getting left once you try and introduce those buckaroos to him. And that's just how it is, right? Hopefully that clears up everything. Hopefully we understand each other and we can move on, right? We get to some of these super chats if we got any. Hook a boy, hook your boy up. So yeah, so I just wanted to address that. <laughs> Let me get to some of these uh, comments. Okay, cool. Mona said, I keep my ear to the street in response to Bobby. <laughs> that's good. Seeing me hustle. Good to see you over here, good brothers. First time I'm seeing you, welcome. Jay said, hit the like button. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that, man. Uh, Mona said, as a mother, any man you date impacts your children, especially regarding your safety. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Vanessa said, my kids is too nosy. There's no way I can keep who I'm dating from him. <laughs> That's funny. A crazy mind says she also tried to lie about having kids when she first went on Kendra's show. Yep. Yep. <laughs> What BLJ said, abort mission, abort mission. Yeah, so I mean, it, it happens. So, and guys, let me know in the comment section if I'm off. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I'm just trying to help women out, single mothers in particular. You know, don't get offended that I'm relaying the message. You should do something with this information that you're getting. You should change the way you're dating, right? Instead of getting upset and looking for the, the, uh, the minority, you know, and be like, oh, man, you know, well, I know a friend that, she had six kids and this guy, you know, I'm going to show y'all a comment real quick. Hold on. Mona said, yes, regardless of them uh, allowing the man to meet your kids is still a safety issue for the mom, which is, impacts the children. Absolutely. And I, just, like I said, I'm, I'm always introduce the health and safety aspect of it because, you know, my background and where I work, I'm in the health industry, right? I see how many people come into the, the clinics. I see the numbers, right? Every day especially for the uh, African-American community, right? So when I introduce these health and safety issues, it's for a reason, right? 
So yeah, it's uh that's something that uh, a lot of women need to think about. Let me see here. So I want to bring up these uh comments from that page, uh from that uh that post. Hold on, let me show y'all something. And this what this is what tends to happen in these spaces. People love focusing on the the minority. I don't know why, but it is what it is. So I don't know. Let's see here. Here we go. So this lady, she said, lies. I got married with four kids and made two more. F out of here. Some guys date any woman just for sex, right? So lady, I wasn't talking about you in particular. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> so she's using her own personal experience to say that I'm lying. But if you look in the comments, guys are saying the exact same thing that I'm sitting there trying to explain to you. So I'm not like, I was like, lady, I'm not even talking to you. I don't know you. So why would you even put that in there? But it is what it is. <laughs> she said, y'all, what did she say? Hold on. Let me pull that up. It's funny. So y'all listen to any clown with a mic. Men don't owe nobody but their own kids as well as women. I don't understand what that means, but yeah, kudos to you. Thank you for, uh, for commenting. <laughs> Let's see here. This is another one said uh it be like that for immature guys because they see the children as she puts in work i'm not sure what that actually means but it, i mean hey okay she does put in work if y'all can translate that for me i, I would gl greatly appreciate it <laughs> let's see here uh it's really not that it's all about protecting the kids from becoming attached to someone who most likely will not be around long term so this uh guy right here he's basically saying what i was saying in regards to the recreational use comment but he's also saying you know hey it's uh for i guess uh guys who aren't you know trying to be out around there for a long time which is true you know and like i said for the majority of guys that's how they see single mothers for one they know that you're having sex because you have proof running around right you had sex before and that's why it seems so crazy to most guys in these spaces, when we hear women with one, two, three kids, and they say, oh man, I'm waiting until marriage until I get married. It's like, what? And Kevin Samuels was the best at conveying this message to women. He was like, man, you had two kids pop out of you. What you talking about? You celibate now. Like what? <laughs> it was just so crazy. And I don't think women understood it from a male perspective. Like, yeah, like I'm, so I'm supposed to be walking around here knowing that you gave a man that you possibly didn't marry but you gave him the highest honor that you can get any any man by having his kid, right? And now you telling me to come in here and you're going to be celibate until we get married. Like what? Like it just makes no sense to men. It makes sense to women because you're trying to get a fresh start. You know what I'm saying? And I understand. And you're like, well, I'm going to try not to give him sex so I can get a commitment first. And that's the game that we play on this dating market. Men want sex. And then, you know, hey, if they can get that as soon as possible, Hey, more power to the man. Women want commitment first. So it's kind of a, a race to see who wins. And that's why I, I like the whole game analogy. It is a game. The dating market is a game. And mo both people are trying to gain leverage in regards to what they want. It's just that simple. So whoever gets what they want first, right, then that's who wins. So if women get the commitment first and then they can give up sex, that's more power to, to her. That's what that whole celibacy thing is. If men can get sex first, sex first and then they figure out, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Then it is what it is. But that's how the game works. And we just going to have to accept it. So let's see here. Another one. He said, it is a privilege if he cares for her and what's more than recreational sex. That's what she said. Let me pull that up. Yeah. You know, and, and I honestly, I, I agree with her. Like I said, you know, in my last live stream, um, being a stepfather or signing up to be a stepfather is a commendable thing. It's individually commendable because we all know that there is no real benefit for a man signing up to be a stepfather, right? So for him to take on somebody else's responsibility, kids, right, and raise them as his own, then that is a very commendable act. But I do believe that there is no benefit, right? But when you have men that sign up to do that, then more power to them, right? But don't expect it from the majority of men. It just doesn't happen like that. And I think people 
get caught up in these spaces when we talk about the stepfather conversation they like to lump the kids in there well what about the kids remember the man the, the potential stepfather is the third party right he doesn't belong to any of the foolery that happened before him so if you have a mother who had kids with multiple men or a man prior to him introducing himself to this situation he is the third party so it's not about the kids it's about what he's willing to do and accept getting with this woman who already has children. So separate the man, the woman, and the kids. They are not in the same group. They are three different entities when you start talking about benefits. Of course, it benefits women to have a stepfather or a husband, a new husband, right? Because she's benefiting from having a man there. You're not going to be alone. I get it. And then it also benefits the kids because they get a father figure right? If the father's not there, you introduce a stepfather, you, the kids are getting all the benefits that a father would, the biological father was supposed to do. So yes, I didn't expect women to like what the young lady said. I think it was L original. I didn't expect women to like that, right? I expected them to act exactly how they did. They were pissed off. Like, what do you talk about, you know, stepfathers a week and all that stuff? If you were a man and you thought went most of the women was going to be okay with that, then you fooling yourself. Because like I said, anything that inherently benefits women, it's going they're going to be for it. And having a stepfather benefits women, right? So that's what that's why I was so it was out of the norm for a woman to say what men have been saying for the past, I mean, vocally, I would say about past 5 or 6 years. That yeah, it's really no benefit to being a stepfather. But it is commendable. You know, if you sign up for that as a man, yes, you will gain favor in the eyes of a lot of women, right? This what is it? What's that saying? Uh, I'm not the stepfather, I'm the father who stepped up, <laughs> right? And so yeah, so yeah, they women love those type of stories, right? They love the future and Sierra and Russell Wilson uh narrative because Russell Wilson swooped in and takes care of little future as his own right? What? Yeah, they love that because there's a lot of single mothers in the black community. So why would they love that? So yeah, so I just wanted to uh, highlight some of those uh, comments. They were pretty good, actually. So Y'all ain't subscribed to the Media Man Instagram page. Head over there. It's called Media Man RP. You can still, uh, I think I'm at like almost 400 followers. Like I said, that's the slowest moving uh, platform. I don't know why I don't do too well on uh, Instagram, but I'm pretty sure to start growing here very shortly. So before we get to this next time topic, I want to get to some of these comments real quick. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. Uh, CME Hustle said, Jay, put me on, bro. You think real analytically, which is something I like. Keep up the great work. I appreciate that, good brother. Thank you. Thank you for supporting. Uh, Barbara Inc. said, I think these women know who the hood guys are. They pass them up every day. I think you meant uh, good guys. Yeah, and I, I tend to agree with that. I got some videos for that. Danny, man, my guy back in the building. King David is in the house. Danny Elliott, the man of steel. Salute. That's my guy. Daddy been rocking with me for years. <laughs> Appreciate it, good brother. Will Smith. Good to see that. I'm a single father and I don't let women meet my son. Yeah, and I understand the reasoning. I definitely understand the reasoning. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, put some, of, uh, some more of your experience in the comment section. I'm, I'm I'm interested to hear. Yeah, thank you, Mona. Please like the video. Please, uh, when you join, go ahead and like that video. Thank you. Barbara Inc. says, Vanessa Marcel, we underestimate kids' intelligence all the time like they don't see us. <laughs> That's funny. Theo, my man, said, uh, bro, you still don't have a mind. Oh, man. I, you're right, brother. Yeah, that's my bad. Thank you for holding me accountable, sir. <laughs> Give it to Mona. She's my head mod. Hit the like button. I got you. Yes, Mona, I got you. Yes, I, I definitely will put Mona as a, <laughs> you got me. I forgot. <laughs> I got you. Thank you, brother. And thank you for the super chat. Thank you, brother. Uh, BOJ said, how about y'all single mothers and fathers just focus on raising them kids until they are out of the house? Then find someone who is nice, kind enough to give you an insulin shot when you get old. Hey, that's good advice. Yeah, and, and you know how it is. Like in these spaces, I think a lot of people were told wrong in regards to this whole single mother conversation. And I, I that's why I love these spaces because men are being, you know, open and honest. 
And I really think women should take advantage of that. Just sit there and listen. Don't get offended. It's okay. Like nobody's trying to, you know, hurt you personally. We're just trying to give you the advice and, you know, you can hear it straight from men's mouths, right? So, yeah, that's, that's uh, great advice, uh, BOJ. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. Got you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, brother. <laughs> Theo, my man, coming in here, dropping the bombs. Yeah, I do need to make Mona a moderator if she is so inclined and can help a brother out. <laughs> help <a> brother out. <laughs> Vanessa says, Barbara, yes, they are smarter than we think. My son knows me so well. Absolutely. I, my child knows me very well. <laughs> Barbara says women know who the stepfather types are. A lot of times that's not the guy they want. Yeah, and, and, and you know those standards get curved. We know how these spaces work, right? <laughs> they get curved once you start getting older. You want somebody around. It's like, yeah, you know, now, you know, I need a guy, you know, to settle down with or whatever. I think the same thing happened with uh, Vanessa Simmons. And I think the rapper, is it Yo Gotti, right? I think that's a story that most men know how he was chasing her for a while. I think he put her in, uh, put her name in some of his lyrics and he was chasing her for a while. And she finally got done messing with other guys and was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give your guy to your chance. You know, and now they quote unquote in love. Right. <laughs> but yeah, more power to them. If they happy, Hey, it is what it is. I see me also. I think there are a lot of guys a lot that will take whatever woman comes into their life, low value men for sure. But to tell them what they want to hear crowd, those guys for sure will take. Absolutely. Right. Commendable. Yes. Beneficial to the father. No. A uh, hell. Uh, bio kids aren't even appreciative. yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not, you know, like I said, I wouldn't go, go as far as to say that a single father is weak. Absolutely not. You know, I, I don't like that phrase being used towards black men. But uh, it definitely is no benefit to me personally, in my opinion. Let's see here. Uh, Randy SoCal, I got that 10. Everyone have a nice day. I appreciate that, good brother. Thank you. Uh, good to see you in here. Will Smith said, the problem is her kids will eventually become a bill for me. Most men don't ask women to help financially with outside children. And that's the distinct difference between uh, a single father and a single mother. And I continuously have to explain this to women it's easier for a woman to come into a single father situation because he's not expecting you pr to provide for the whole household. Whereas a man dealing with a single mother, he is expected to be the protector and the provider. And with this young woman on the Kendra G show, she had six children, right? And she kept reiterating, you don't have to worry about my kids. Yes, he absolutely does. If y'all go ahead and get married, do you really think that he's going to go to his 40, 50 hour a week work, you know, job and come back and not share some of that money with the family. Come, I mean, we got to think when you say, no, you don't have to worry about my kids. He absolutely does have to worry about your kids because more than half of his check is going towards making sure that they're okay and raising them. He is actually the dad now, right? He's living in the house. So yeah, so it, it does fall on him. So I think single mothers need to think about that before they, Throw so that phrase out there. You don't have to worry about my kids. Really? Like, no. <laughs> Let's see here. Barbara Inc. says, I wonder how does it work for single fathers? I mean, how do women view dating single fathers? I actually looked into that. Uh, single fathers, they gain more favor with women because it shows that a man has a sensitive side and he can take care of his kids or take care of somebody other than themselves or uh, himself. It looks favorably on men if you're a single father. I think they've had movies made based off of single fatherhood. I think Kevin Hart was uh, the most recent one that did a video. Women or did a movie. Women loved that movie, right? Because it showed him taking care of, you know, his kids. And another statistic that a lot of people aren't aware of is that single fathers tend to have the same outcomes as a married couple in regards to raising their kids right? There's literally no drop off when a single father raises kids on his own. It is almost at the same rate as a two parent household. The only difference is when single mothers take care of kids, that's when things tend to go a little bit bad. And I'll give you a perfect example in regards to how uh, my daughter was raised with me being in the military. And after me and my uh, 
my my wife, my ex-wife actually split. We had to do the co-parenting thing, right? So I'm looked at as a uh, disciplinarian, right? The father. So when my daughter would get out of hand, and let's say if I was on a deployment or something like that, my uh, her her mother would call me or send a leave an email or a message. Your daughter did this or whatever, and then I would have to come back from a deployment. I would get on the phone and talk to my daughter. What the hell are you doing over there? Hey, chill out. Stay, relax. Stop doing foolery. You know what I'm saying? And get her in line. So that's how that dynamic tends to work. The fathers are tend to be focused on disciplining and making sure that the kids are raised correctly. Women are tend to be nurturers, right? They want to make sure that the kids feel good. That's why you rarely hear men say phrases like, my, uh, my son is my best friend. Or, you know, the, my daughter's my best friend. You hear women say that all the time. You have to be friends with your kids. And most fathers are like, hell no. Like, well, we need some, some discipline in this house. Like, what? That's not my friend. You got, you got to listen to me when you're under this roof, right? So, yeah. So, uh, single fathers tend to be favorable on the dating market for the most part. Especially uh, single mother, single fathers tend to earn more, right? Because they have to take care of, ki care of the kids. And they are less of a burden on our taxes, on the government, because men rarely ask for assistance. That's crazy, right? Y'all can look this up. Men rarely ask for assistance when they are taking care of their kids. They'll, they'll work 70 hours a week before they ask for food stamps, even child support. That was something that the lead attorney mentioned. He said that he needs more men to start putting women on child support. But they don't because they're like, they take the stance of, I got this. I can take care of it. I don't need her money. But when you don't put women on child support, that's why we have the court system as skewed as it is because they're going to look at you as like, well, you don't need it. And this affects men in the future, right? But when women go to court, that's the first thing that they're going to do. They're going to be like, yeah, what's going on with their child support? Hook them up. Even though that you may be being a great father, you know, uh, you may be doing what you're supposed to do. But that child support is going to be mandatory, right? So, like I said, I'm going to credit the lead attorney for this. He was saying guys need to start putting women on child support a little bit more because of the fact that it affects men in the future who try and put their women on child support or try and get something enacted, and it's not going to work because, you know, men just tend to take the stance of, I got this, you know? So, yeah, so that was actually a great comment, man. I, I'm glad I did some research on that. You know, appreciate that, bro. Uh, Theo said, uh, man, uh, reason for the mod, once your channel grows, you will get trolls in your chat. Mona will keep them in line. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Angela, let's say Vanessa, Angela Simmons. Yeah, that's her. Uh, I've already been there, bro. I, de I was definitely the stepdaddy, not worth the trouble at all. Yeah, and like I said, don't, you know, if you guys have stories, please put them in the chat so people won't think that I'm just tripping, you know? <laughs> Yo Gotti and Angela Simmons. Wait, Angela. Yeah, Angela. Okay. He shot his he shot a shot in the song down in the DM. Okay, yeah. See, I wasn't off. I think I got the name wrong though. What's one? I think the other one is 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 gorgeous. Um, is that that's Vanessa? Vanessa, yeah, she's she's beautiful to me. Uh, uh let's see. Vanessa says, Do you did you see the African woman on Kendra's show highlighted yesterday? She has seven kids. Divorce and want five more kids with a new oh hell no. Nah. nah, I didn't see that. <laughs> the only time I catch Kendra when somebody sent it to me. And I, I need to go see what the hell's going on over there. <laughs> Whew, sheesh. Uh, like on Christmas, Will Smith said, like on Christmas and birthdays, does her baby father bring things for my son? If not, my child loses out when her kids get double, or can I not buy her kissing? Yeah, and that's something. That women need to think about. Yeah, you got to stop saying you ain't got you ain't got to worry about my kids. <laughs> All right, Theo, uh, Theo Coop facts. He definitely got to be aware of trolls. Appreciate that. Yeah, man, I, I need to get on it. I got it. Let's see here. Uh, Brand Boj says, look at Media Man taking notes on TLA live last live stream. To no, he I didn't see the last live stream. He said that a while ago. Um, I, if he touched on that again, that uh, that's that's good. I like watching TLA. He taught me a lot in regards to the court system, but I heard that child support thing a long time ago uh, when he first started like really getting uh, big when he was talking about, he did a whole live stream on child support. I think that's where he mentioned it. 
But yeah, I'm about to check out the most recent one. I didn't know he was back from his uh vacation. So yeah, I'm about to check out his page. See here, uh, uh, Danny said, man, still in the house. I'm back on track, putting those digestive disasters in their place. Salute to you, Super Bear. Appreciate that, good brother. My man, Danny. So let's get to this uh, next topic. I know y'all seen Sierra's song. Um, she made a song about independent women. I can't play it here. I'll definitely get flagged. But if you guys haven't heard it, go to her page. I think she still has the clip up. I thought it was a joke. I thought that people had like, put together, you know, Sierra in the studio, and then they made a song and put it over her. But she literally made a song about uh, encouraging independent women, you know, for the women that got their own and things of that nature. I was like, wow, this is kind of crazy. It's hypocritical for this woman who is living the, the dream in regards to how most Black women see it, especially Black women with children. They're like, man, you got a, a multimillionaire to sit there and take care of your kids on your own. And this is what you're supporting. And one thing that I like to see, I did see a lot of black women pushing back. And that was a first. I had rarely seen that. There was a lot of black women pushing back in regards to why she made a song talking about independent women when they all want what she has. And I was like, why would you make a song? But the reason why she did that is because I guess that's what she sees being pushed in this climate. And that all is a test to how black women are conveying this message. When you keep telling people that, hey, I don't need a man, I want to be independent, people are going to start to lean into that. Sierra being one of them, right? So she thought she could make a quick bag and make this song to encourage y'all to be single mothers while she goes back and lays on Russell Wilson's uh, chest. So, <laughs> But this young lady actually caught my eye from this video from TikTok. She actually summed it up in like 48 seconds or less. So let's uh, listen to this video real quick. We're mad about Sierra because it's just like, bitch, you pray for Russell. Yeah, you had your little single era after future. Okay, yeah. But while you were single, you were praying for him. You wasn't talking about some single ladies, get your money up, independent. No, you wanted a man, okay? So stop trying to tell me to be single when you got your Russell Wilson. <laughs> I, wanna, I don't want to hear no single music from Sierra or Beyonce no fucking more, okay? You know what I want to hear from them? I want to hear about how great their marriages are. I want to hear about the vacations they're going on. I want to hear about the life they're creating for themselves. From Sierra, I want to hear about how Russell took her kid under his wing, a kid that wasn't even his, bitch. It, it, it's his kid now. That's what I want to hear about from Sierra. I don't want to hear no independent shit from you, bitch. Because when you was single, you wanted a man. Man. So she, like I said, she basically summed it up. And like I said, I was kind of proud of black women for actually pushing back for a chance and being like, man, this is not the message that we want to be hearing from you, especially from you. And it was just uh, absurd to me. And I know, I remember, what was this, in 2017 when Beyonce came out with Lemonade, when... um. People thought that she, they were encouraging black, or they were encouraging Beyonce to leave Jay Z because uh, he cheated on her, right? And she made that album basically alluding to the cheating and how she was liberated and she was going to leave. And then maybe like, I want to say six months later, she pops up pregnant with twins. <laughs> and she kind of did the bait switch on black women because they were literally, if you, you got, y'all think I'm lying. I think you could still type in Beyonce Lemonade and you will see a whole thread of women, black women in particular, saying, hey, I left my my boyfriend or I left my husband because of this this album. And then Beyonce literally did the bait and switch and came up pregnant. And I was like, <laughs> that's a damn shame. But yeah, <laughs> it's happened before, but this was the first time that I saw uh, our women push back. So I was... Glad to see it. You know, and I had a couple of conversations with some of my friends over the weekend, female friends. And I was telling them, I was like, man, if you would have just sat there and listened to Kevin Samuels, he's been talking about this stuff for a while now. Right. But one thing that I noticed with women in these spaces, um, I noticed that every time I talk to a woman who doesn't like Kevin Samuels, they always say, I didn't listen to Kevin Samuels, but they know what he said. Hmm. <laughs> it's just so funny to me. Every woman is like, I didn't listen to him. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't listen to him. So I don't know what, what they talk about over there, but they know exactly what he said. So that message is getting to you at some point. And I think it's starting to hit home with all these black women 
started to push back. There was literally just a woman on the spiritual word that says she lost weight because of Kevin Samuels. And they got mad at her in the comment section. <laughs> they got mad at that woman for saying that Kevin Samuels inspired her to, uh, to, to lose weight. I'm like, man, what is, why are you unhappy? What y'all angry at breakfast? Like, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, let's see here. Let me go back up. Danny says, uh, all right, the comments starting to increase. So yeah, I'm gonna have to skip a couple of them. And then, but if, like I said, if you want to go ahead and drop that cash app or super chat, I got you. I got you. I would definitely see it. He said, I'm glad some women are awake now due to us men that are vocal on uh, that subject, uh, our, uh, that subject matter. Absolutely, brother. Hey, there, there we, okay. Beyonce did it too. I'm a single lady, but she got uh, Jay-Z right. He's a billionaire. Absolutely. <laughs> and Beyonce said, uh, Vanessa said it too. She's channeling her, channeling her inner Beyonce. They both make songs about empowering single women while they go home to their husbands, but don't blame the game. Uh, blame the game, blame the consumer. Absolutely. If y'all gonna keep eating it up, then they're gonna continue to make it. So Barbara Inc. says, okay, my sister said, with your chest, Beyonce, and the rest of them charge stuff. <laughs> you fool. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we need Theo's uh, Kawhi Leonard laugh. That's, that was hilarious. <laughs> uh, Vanessa says, yes, when I heard women left their husband because of the Lemonade album, I was in shock. Yeah, I was still in the military at the time, and I didn't even have Twitter. And I saw it on uh, maybe on Instagram. They had put together like a Twitter feed and there were literally women explaining uh, situations on why they left their husband because of that album. I was like, this is crazy. Let me see here. I hey, appreciate that, uh, Gene. Yeah, like I said, these uh, comments are getting up there. So I appreciate that. Send them super chat. Say it. Thank you. I'm getting better at trying to uh, convey that message. I see a lot of content creators that are, are very good at saying, oh, hey, the Super Chats and the Cash App, I appreciate it. So thank you. Uh, Cerebral Inquirer said, what the hell was the Lemonade album? Who produced that? Man, I forgot. Beyonce, she always has a lot of producers on her albums. Like, a lot of them. And a lot of people don't know that. So, yeah, so let's see here. So, and also, I know y'all saw this. Let me show y'all a picture. I was dying laughing. I don't know who did it. But they are fool for this. Let me know if y'all recognize who who this is. Let's see here. Hold on. <laughs> I know y'all seen this story. Look at that. Who is that? <laughs> oh man, that's somebody used Alex L artwork that I just used for my uh, primitive dating standards, and he actually put this. He put Michael B. Jordan's head when he was in the wire over the, the nerd guy and uh, L'Oreal, who is a member of the lip service podcast, Angela Yee's lip service podcast said, don't worry, baby. He's just corny. Why do they always pick the thug? Then years later, Hey baby, remember me beat it chick. <laughs> Why can't I find a good man? <laughs> so I know y'all saw that whole Michael B. Jordan uh, debacle where she sit there and she was, he said that, hey, you call me the corny guy, right? And so I put, if you guys are unfamiliar, I put together the compilation video because the young lady who actually called him corny, she doubled down on it. But I just want to give you guys a little bit of background in regards to what actually happened with that uh, situation. So here we go. This is, this is video that the Shade Room actually posted. This is audio, actually, of the conversation that was had. So I want you guys to do this for me. Tell me what was worse, what L'Oreal said or her saying, hey, um, uh, he's corny or not, right? So let's listen to what, 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 what was said. Jordan is just like a nice, corny guy. And I don't mean that as a slight, right? I mean, we all know that the nice, corny guys treat you the best. You know what's so crazy? I went to school with Michael B. Jordan at a point in life, and we went to Chad Science together in Newark. And to be honest with you, we teased him all the damn time because his yeah. name was Michael Jordan. <laughs> like, let, like, let's start there. And he was no Michael Jordan. And then he also 
would come to school with headshots. And back then, that was like in in the hood. We lived in Newark. Yeah, like that. That's the hood. You know what I mean? So. It, it, we would make fun of him, like, oh, "What you gonna do with your little stupid headshots?" Like, and now look at <laughs> and him. Now look at him. He got that like phantom money. Well, yeah, I didn't uh, exactly. <laughs> I could have been in an aquarium swimming with the fishes, but with you your know, stock or whatever. And, no, you yeah. Instead, cookies. I'm swimming in Mexico by myself, child. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he gives me cookie cutter. And the only time yeah. I hung out with Michael B is like in L in L A, like at you right. know, Shay's house, and he's always just very like. He's just cool. I think he's too he probably, rich to have to be hood now. Like you right. just be, boy, if you don't take him millions and and, and go to and go to Hermes and get some stuff. All right. So real quick, what do you think was worse? Her her not calling him corny or what she actually said about him? Like, come on, man. Let's be honest here. Like they were trying to they were trying to absolve her from responsibility and saying that no, Michael B. Jordan was wrong because she didn't call him corny. But she actually said worse. She said that she used, they used to bully him in a high school. So, of course, he remembered who the hell he, she was, right? So they were trying to lean on the fact that, well, it was the other girl that called him corny. But I got some more videos. This is actually from her saying, uh, you're not corny. So she was actually, you know, admitting to the fact that she probably thought he was corny, right? This is what she said. She said, you're not corny anymore. I know it was very low. But yeah, but here's the actual audio of actually uh, the, when he had confronted her on the red carpet for Creed 3. <laughs> so we got Michael B. Jordan, the director mm -hmm. and the star of Creed 3. And you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? What a corny kid, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I did not say that. Oh, Misquoted for sure. Yeah, well, no, you did not hear me say I said we used to make fun of the name, but yeah, he is obviously killing things out here. I don't know. All right. So this is from a previous video that I did in regards to women uh, labeling men as like nerds and thinking that that's a good thing. So here we go. Where women get the impression that that's a compliment to educated men, in particular, educated black men. That's not going to get guys to run over there and be like, oh, you said you like nerds? You said you like squares? It basically sounds like you're gonna cheat on them once you get into a relationship because you see him as a boring guy or a clean cut, straightforward type of man. And with that type of rhetoric that she's preaching, that's why I believe that she is better suited for a man who is an entertainer, a rapper, scammer, hood dude, because that's what she's going to attract. And I see this a lot in these YouTube spaces where these women will be done up with all the fake nails, the makeup and the hair, and they're asking for a better caliber of men to approach them. But they're not going to get that because you present, your costume presents as you only date the rappers, the scammers, and the drug dealers. So I just did a video on this. This is the whole live stream about primitive dating standards. And basically what I was trying to explain to women in that video is that if you look like, you know, like L'Oreal looks with that yellow ass hair, you're not going to get a guy like Michael B. Jordan. In particular, if you calling guys corny, squares, nerds, that's not a compliment, no matter how you spin it. Right. Because the other girl was like, yeah, and I'm not saying that, you know, that's like that's not a bad thing. But in actuality, in the black community, it is when you label guys like that because of the fact that we understand what you mean, even though um, it's, you know, like I pride myself on being an educated black man. You know, I pride myself on not falling into the category of Pookie Ray Ray or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But with those types of women, you don't qualify for good men. So that's why I always tell men in particular, stop telling these women that you need to date a better caliber of men. No, they don't qualify for those men. They're supposed to date the scammers, the drug dealers, the the rappers and entertainers is going to cheat on them or do whatever the hell they want to do. Don't push those women on good men. They don't qualify. And they need to understand why they don't qualify because you look like you date rappers and scammers. And yes, everybody judges. It is what it is. It is a natural thing that all humans do. We don't have time to sit there and get to know you in you know in a passing situation. If I see you on the street, you got red, green, blue hair, 
You know what I'm saying? And the same thing goes for guys who run around here sagging their pants, you know, and got a black and mouth hanging out of the side of their lip. I'm not going to sit there and ask questions or think, you know, assume that you went to Harvard. Your appearance matters, right? So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, stop pushing these types of women on to good, upstanding black men because they do not qualify at all, right? I remember back in the day they were, before uh, Nicki Minaj got with her current, you know, troubled husband. Uh, <laughs> they were trying to tell Nicki Minaj after she broke up with uh, Meek Mill that she needs to date uh, a doctor or a lawyer, you know, or an engineer, you know, get a good guy. And I was sitting there like, man, she don't qualify for that. She would do more damage to his professional career than he would, you know, than he would of her career. So trying to push upstanding professional men on women who look the part of a video vixen or whatever the hell else stop doing that because they don't qualify right and men don't qualify for certain women i mean we but we know this we accept this it is what it is but yeah so it stop trying to push these crazy ass women on dudes that's you know doing well for themselves it's, it's crazy to me oh we got super oh man y'all the best wow <laughs> let me Gene, man, he says, uh, I got you, brother. It's all love. Thank you, bro. Like I said, man, damn. $9.99. Thank you, brother. BLJ, he coming in with the with the $20. What do they call it? The um, this uh, what is what is it called? I've heard people say this stream sponsor, right? So that's you right now, brother. Thank you, man. Hey, shit, damn. <laughs> Thank you. My man, Cerebral Inquirer, always coming through with the Super Chat, $2, good brother. Man, you've been supporting me, bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Damn. Let me see. Uh, who didn't I get? Fireman. Oh, good seeing her. Uh, back then, they didn't want me. <laughs> now I'm hot. <laughs> yeah. BLJ said, uh, <laughs> sing it with me. Back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all, all on me. Shout out to Mike Jones, man. Hey, that album was cold. I know people, you know, was like, oh, he was a one-hit wonder. But go back and listen to that old Mike Jones album. He has some some good songs on there. Yeah, so <laughs> that song was, was I mean, that's tattooed in everybody's head. So <laughs> seeing, uh, seeing me hustle says, let's be honest, men with MBJ uh, status don't mess with women like that anyway. Absolutely. And I know L'Oreal from Angela Yee's Lip Service podcast. If you guys don't, uh, if you guys are new here, when I first got into these spaces, um, lip service was actually a podcast that I wanted to listen to to get some some gain some insight in regards to modern women, and she was actually a member of that show, and she was always the the most uh, combative one on the show as well. So I'm not surprised that she was in there, you know, talking bad about Michael B. Jordan. So yeah, well, I wasn't surprised. Uh, BLJ said, "Medium man bench press cars for fun." <laughs> I appreciate that. Hey, I'm a man. I need to if I if I go out there and I lift my car, I'm gonna have to get I'm gonna use it as content and tag BOJ. <laughs> Cerebral says she's better suited for them streets. Yeah, like I said, man, stop pushing these women on the upstanding gentlemen. You know, you know, brothers is living in high rises and things. No, they go find somebody else. <laughs> Danny, uh, it's usually uh angry women like that to talk trash about high value men that don't need them at all yeah absolutely i'm not tripping off them women vanessa oh man <laughs> i appreciate it i'm watching on facebook but showing support on here too thank you i appreciate your support yeah I, oh man y'all go make a a young thug tear up <laughs> triple og triple double og <laughs> thank you man so <clears throat> Oh, my goodness. So let's get to the travel. Man, I've been waiting on this. Let me let me pull everything up. And like I said before, if you guys missed those uh, statistics, they started, um, you know, when I first began the show. The reason why I'm doing this, uh, this live stream. So let's get to this solo travel thread that this young lady started over on Twitter. <clears throat> She based, this is what she said on Twitter. Hold on. So for solo travel, she said, don't let the internet fool you. Solo traveling 
is low key boring, right? And so she was just, uh, I guess she, she's a young lady and she said this. And I know there, there's a lot of women who like to solo travel. Uh, however, there are, from doing my research, and I got some videos on that, there are a lot of women who actually uh, don't speak highly of solo travel. And the reason for that is based off of my travel experiences. I'm an introvert by trade. However, the military got me all at, out of that immediately. But I have no issues with uh, solo travel. I've been to various countries by myself. Um, I went to most recently. I went to Brazil by myself. Um, been to a bunch of countries just on my own. So I'm I'm suited to deal with being you know a solo traveler because of the fact that I don't have a problem with um, incorporating myself into that country's culture. So for the women in particular, if you want to solo travel, I'm always hesitant when I hear some of my friends say they're going to these countries by themselves because I am very protective of my female friends and I always make sure that they have certain stipulations in place prior to leaving to these different countries. But there's a safety issue that I'm always concerned about with women. And also, if you're a woman who is an introvert, you may not have a good time being a solo traveler because if you do that, you're going to have to get out. You're going to have to travel, walk around the city, you know, and, and you know, ingratiate yourself into the culture. You have to meet new people. So when I see comments like this where people saying it's boring, I always lean on the fact that this may be an introverted woman. Because if you do solo travel by yourself and you're not used to making friends such as extroverted women, then it's going to be a tough time. Because all of the women, well, the majority of the women that I know who travel solo, they have extrovert personalities, extroverted personalities. So they don't have a problem with going to a different country uh, you know, going to a carnival or a festival or something like that and introducing themselves, making friends. I just met some people such and such. And I'm always like, hey, what the hell? What you doing over there? Who'd you meet? You know, where? who is this? What is? Who did you interact with or whatever? But they tend to have a better time when you your people who have extroverted personalities. They have a better time when they travel solo. Right. So I don't want to, I guess. Uh. I don't, I don't want you guys not to travel as introverts. However, just be aware that you may have to step outside of your bubble and you may have to meet people, right? And being an American, um, people are going to come up to you and they want to know your story. They will definitely talk to you, but it, the onus is on you to get out there and meet new people, experience new things, shop in the grocery stores, go you know, and, and hang out on the beaches. When people travel, that's what they tend to do. You know, and just be open to conversation, you know, but also be aware of your safety as well. Like I said, while I was in the military, I was an anti-terrorism officer and also an interagency officer, which basically means that I would travel to different countries and I don't have to gauge the threats, the risk, right, for our military members, right? So I just translated that over to what I do here and also the advice that I give on Patreon, right? So I give people that advice to make sure that you're safe, both uh, healthy, you know, and also, you know, safe from any, uh, you know, risk that may be involved in a particular country. And I want women to do the same. I want you to do your research on these countries before we uh, move forward. And that's why I brought up, let's see here, the safety aspect for the ladies and also for the gentlemen as well. But before we get to it, let me get to these comments before we get to it. Oh man, I got another super chat. He said, Dusty Nuts. Hey, I like that. <laughs> he said, man, Dennis sent me over, brother. Appreciate that. Like I said, I just gave uh, Dennis Sperling some, some thanks before the show started. He sent a lot of people over to my panel, and I appreciate him for that. Like I said, I've been uh, following Dennis Sperling's story since Kevin Samuels shared it on the Mix page on Facebook. So, yeah, I appreciate that, brother, for what he uh, what he did for the platform. Welcome, good brother. Thank you. Let's see, CME Hustle says, I'm the same though, introverted by nature, but uh, courtesy of Uncle Sam, I'm unafraid and do my world travels mostly uh, dolo. Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, the military, yeah, you get out of that shit immediately. <laughs> uh, BOJ said, veterans and retired military tend to do well traveling solo. Uh, they learn all the bad places to avoid and following all threat assessments. Yeah, like I said, so hold on, I'll give you a little bit of background. Uh, my last uh, five years, of my military career. Uh, Dusty Nuts 
says I'm over here too. Okay, cool. Y'all know each other. Good breath. Uh, let's see. Uh, I knew you were coming. <laughs> so uh, my last five years uh, in the military and special operations, I was actually a uh, air advisor. If you guys are unfamiliar with that, it's an uh, air advisor is a person who travels to different countries and we train host nation military members on our skill set. I was a medic. So I would go to these different countries and I would have to, you know, um, train up their, you know, our partnering, partnering organizations for that particular country. And that's how I got certified as an anti-terrorism officer and also uh, an interagency officer as well. And that was all through special operations, man. I went to some of the best school, best schools. Some of the most educated men were able to educate me in regards to special operations. Uh, the army, they have some of the most uh, amazing schools. Airborne school was one of the most professional schools that I've ever been to. And that's both civilian and military. Also, um, anti-terrorism was actually taught by a uh, Air Force member, a great school as well. So yeah, so I just bring that information to uh, these platforms and also to the Patreon where we get a little bit more in depth in regards to what's going on in the threat assessments and the risk areas in certain uh, countries, right? And uh, I agree with you. Yeah, veterans, retired military, we tend to do very well with our travels, right? So, and that's why I was telling people before there was a passport bro movement at, I mean, if you were in the military, you probably already been traveling, right? So, I mean, it is what it is. So that's why I like to see a lot of brothers getting on that travel uh, train and starting to get out there and get cultured, you know? So that's why I always support the passport bros. Let's see here. All right. So let's continue. So for the safety aspect, and this is for both men and women, hopefully you guys know about these websites. If you don't, let me educate you. Let me see. First one I'm going to pull up. Here we go. <clears throat> let's see here. Oh, Dusty Nuts. Uh, he said, uh, uh, thank you, vet soldier or airman. Airman, uh, I was in the Air Force for 20 years, retired. Uh, but I did a lot of uh, training with the Army. Let's just say that much. I go a little bit into detail, <laughs> and I share some pictures on Patreon or whatever. But, yes, I'm an Air Force retired service member. Were you uh, uh, you were in the service? Let me. Oh, okay, cool. We got. Oh, man, we always got a lot of uh, military folks in here. I love to see that. Navy vet here, Army sucks, but I won't hold that against you. <laughs> it's, not, it's not me. I think that's uh, um, Dusty Nuts. <laughs> uh, Royce J, salute. I retired back in 2021 from the U.S. Army. Absolutely good, brother. Good to see that, man. Good to see you over here. I like to see the vets in the, in the comment section, man. It seemed like we speak, uh, we speak an unspoken language, so to speak, because <laughs> we all went through the suck. <laughs> good on you, brother. Uh, Barbara Inc. says, uh, Vanessa Marcel, honestly, I'm curious to put a face to these so-called nerds and pookies. I don't think a lot of guys were called bad, are really bad. Absolutely. He said, uh, CMB Chair Force sucks too, but they got all the fun. <laughs> hey, brother, watch your mouth, good brother. You know what I'm saying? That's cause for, for a rumble. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, the Air Force uh, does have some beautiful women. Let's see, uh, not a very uh, DQ due to asthma, but grandson of a Tuskegee Airman. Oh, man. Uh, that's good on you, brother. You know what's funny? I actually have a uh, moderate to severe asthma, <laughs> uh, believe it or not, right? But the funny thing is I developed it for some odd reason when I got stationed at my last uh, duty station, which was in New Mexico, because the air quality was so bad and we used to do so many operations and training in that area, it got to me. And I was actually diagnosed with asthma on my way out of the military. Uh, believe it or not. Right. So, and I had been dealing with this, I guess, uh, for a while now, you know, I I've ran, you know, half marathons. I've ruck marched everywhere, jumped out of all kinds of fixed aircraft. <laughs> and then they say I got asthma when I'm doing my, my VA assessments and all that type of stuff, you know? So yeah, man. Um, I don't know how, but it just happened. So <laughs> Uh, let's see, Roger, congratulations. You got that mailbox money coming in. <laughs> hey, you know what it is. Everybody wait. Hey, we, I think we about to get paid here in a second. <laughs> Theo, man, AF vet here. Salute to the vets. Absolutely. Love to see y'all in here. Hey, did I, uh, oh, okay. 
let me uh, acknowledge that super chat. I'm sorry, good brother. Thank you for that, man. I appreciate that. So, uh, uh, medium, do you got that milk? Uh, man, come on, brother. You know what I'm saying? It, I ain't gonna never be broke. So, <laughs> if I stop working right now, it, we we good over here. So, <laughs> and I think that's what women need to understand about vets, especially retired military members. It's a lot of guys out here that's never gonna be broke, and y'all missing out. And then you couple that. Like I myself, I work for the federal government. I'm a GS-13. So I, man, you put those things together, we doing well over here. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we, we doing very well over here. Hey, that's what I'm saying. A permanent in total. Wait, we in the same boat, brother. <laughs> so yeah, women, y'all better pay attention to these vets, man. These, uh, these guys got money to burn. <laughs> that's why they always traveling. I'm in the same boat. So. See, see, I only, uh, only entertain the Air Force uh, thought because I'm a beast at pilot games. Better put some respect on their name. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, the Air Force, we kind of laid back, but we, we know our worth, like women say, right? <laughs> so let's get to some of these safety uh, websites. So I want to uh, help you guys become aware of what travel.state.gov is so basically before you travel in any country that you're going to i want you all to go to this website and i want you matter of fact since i'm here let me go ahead and put this website in the the chat <clears throat> here you go this is where you can find all the risk assessment information into the country that you're going to. So I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Let's say I'm going to UAE. What's up? Well, I think I gotta put the whole name in. Right? So this is the travel advisory for UAE. <clears throat> Try to make it a little bit uh, clearer for you all. They tell you everything that's going on in that particular country at that moment for a travel advisory it says level two exercise increase caution right and this is because in the middle east there's always a threat of something going on however it is very safe over there but you need to be aware of these things also they have embassy messages for you all um, um you can get all the information that you need from this site it'll tell you what vaccinations you need um current restrictions Anything that you need, you go to this place and they will tell you what's going on in regards to uh, this area. And also, it'll give you the, uh, the addresses for the U.S. Embassy. This is something that you need to be aware of in case you get into any issues while you're overseas. You'll know where the embassy is for, uh, for UAE. This one is in, uh, they have the consulate in Dubai, the general consulate. In Dubai, and they also have the U.S. Embassy in Abu Dhabi. That's actually where my brother lives, right? And then you can go here. You can also enroll in the STEP program. Uh, they give you all the stuff in regards to entry and exit and visa requirements. Let's go here. Safety and security, all that stuff. Let's do one more. What's a, what's a country that people like going to? Brazil? Let's do Brazil. Ladies, I hope you're paying attention. Because I'd be worried about y'all when y'all travel solo. <laughs> so this is for Brazil. It says exercise increased caution due to crime. Some areas have increased risk. Read the entire travel advisory, right? So when you open that up, I'm pretty sure it's going to mention something about uh, pickpocketing. So women, you need to be aware of that as well. I have some things that I typically use when I travel. So uh, to, to make sure that my money is in a safe place. Uh, I shared that in a previous video. I'll go ahead and link it once I clip up this video. And then they also, again, they have the embassy messages. And this is the travel advisory levels, right? So this is one that's at level two, right? When you see something that says reconsider travel, then you may want to reconsider travel, <laughs> right? And you need to read the whole report. So hopefully that helps in regards to the travel uh, travel.state. Make sure you go to that website. Also... CDC. This is Traveler's Health. Let's pull this up. This is the same premise, but it's all focused on uh, Traveler's Health, right? Let me put that link in the description. Let's 
let's see here. All right, so this is where you can go to see uh, what uh, vaccines are uh, that, that you need to go to a particular country. Let's see. Let's go to where we want to go. Colombia. We go to Colombia. Let's see here. So this is the travel notices for Colombia. It just basically tells you what uh, vaccinations are recommended. Going over there, this is uh, the the high risk for certain uh, certain diseases on this side right here to give you all the COVID information that you need and also the, all the links. Let me make sure I gotta pull that up, make that a little bit bigger. Here we go. So yeah, as you can see right there, ladies, I hope you are remembering this stuff. So this goes all the way down, and this is uh this is my area. So the uh, non-vaccine preventable diseases. So a lot of these places, um, they don't carry the same food safety practices that the U.S. does. So you may, you know, sometimes there is a high uh, chance that you may gain some food poisoning. But when you go to these particular countries, you have to make sure that your hot foods are hot and your cold foods are cold. Right. And basically what that means is if you order pizza or chicken, don't eat it if it's lukewarm. Right. You need to make sure that it's piping hot. And what that does, it kills any microbial bacteria that's living in that chicken when it's cooked and it's hot. Right. It's OK to tell them to take the food back. And could you warm it up a little bit? Right. And also, if you are expecting a cold dish, make sure that it's cold. Right. You cannot eat cold dishes warm because that gives it a chance for those that microbial bacteria to grow. And you may risk getting food poisoning. Right. So that's just one thing that you need to uh, keep in mind when you travel to these different countries. But right here, also, it may be good to go get some. Um, and one trick that I notice about, you know, like um, the when you're trying to prevent mosquito bites and things of that nature, you may want to get some their form of off from that country because typically what they do is they use the products that work in their country. So sometimes you may bring uh, off from the states, and they may not be as useful in these different countries. So the best bet that I would suggest is to probably bring a small thing of off. And if it doesn't work, I will go to the local uh, pharmacy or something like that and grab a, a grab some some of their off because it tends to work in their region, right? So yeah, so that's a good trick as well. So yeah, so go to uh, Travelers Health for CDC to get all your information for health and safety, right? And then also another one. This is what I'm putting in there for everyone. You need to get global entry. Um, being that I work for the government, it wasn't required for us to have it, but now it actually is. So what I'm doing, you see this? Global entry is basically um, where you, let me pull this up. I'll make it a little bit bigger. So it, it, I've always had a TSA pre-check. However, global entry, it allows you to move back and forth from these different countries and process uh, with ease, right? Very simple process once you have global entry. It's like no processing lines, no paperwork, access to expedited entry. Uh, it's available at all major U.S. airports. And you also have reduced wait time. So if you're a person who travels frequently overseas, it may be in your best interest to get global entry. It's only a hundred dollar one-time fee, right? And the reason why I know this is like I said, it became a requirement for where I work. Let me show y'all something real quick. Uh, let me pull, I'm going to pull this up. Here we go. All right. So this is my information right here. So I'm actually, uh, tomorrow I have my interview appointment to get my global entry. So I did all the inform uh, all the, the information, uh, while I was at work, uh, finished up the application process and I'm now conditionally approved. And tomorrow I will be going up there before I start my travel week, before I, uh, get on the, get on the plane tomorrow, I'm headed to the airport to finish up my interview to uh, get my global entry, right? So this is what they, they send you. You go to Homeland Security. 
you finish all that stuff up and you're in there, right? So trusted traveler program, it is in your best interest to use that, right? So I, I'll let you guys know before I get on the plane, I'll take some video and uh, pretty much it's going to be a simple process for me and all uh, vets. It's a very simple process for you all, especially if you don't have any, you know, criminal record. All they're going to do is ask you, you know, hey, were you prior military? And you're like, yeah, hey, here's my, you know, my ID card. And it's going to be a smooth process because once you get to the conditionally approved, you already have to put so much information in there to where if you weren't approved, then something must be wrong. Right. So I'd advise you to invest one hundred dollars into that global entry if you travel frequently, because it will definitely be worth your while. You don't want to be stuck, you know, at one of these long ass lines. Right. So, yeah. So let me get to some of these comments real quick. Let me take that off of there. <clears throat> Let's see that. Who <laughs> said another super chat? Appreciate that, good brother. Says uh, they can't travel solo. That's the whole premise of uh, their IRE. Uh, <laughs> let me know what that means, brother. Yeah, it, it's a lot of you know. Um, I share those stats. A lot of women travel solo, and I'm always uh, hesitant when my friends tell me that they're going solo. <laughs> uh, Rice J said, "Yeah, man," but surprisingly, it's pretty common. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Brandon uh, BLJ says, shout out to Global Entry Program. Hey, there we go. See, there we, <laughs> there we go. Prime VA757, yep, shots, especially for places like Indonesia. Absolutely. Rush J said, medium, man. I did quite a bit of work with combat controllers and pararescue men. Sharp guys, absolutely. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, Cerebral Inquirer says, shout out to you, brother. Yep, absolutely. Oh. These nuts. Oh, y'all know each other. Good. Uh, Royce J says, facts, U.S. off doesn't work in Central America. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm glad you sit here. You know, you could, uh, I'm pretty sure you meant, uh, uh, what was that, uh, Republic of, uh, what is RD? Is that Dom uh, Dominican Republic? Yeah, but you, you are absolutely right. You may want to get off from that country, right? Get clear as well. Absolutely. Uh, for global entry, if you possess AMS Platinum card, they have a benefit that pays for your application and card. And Absolutely. That's what I'm using. I'm a, uh, <laughs> a two-time Amex uh, card holder. I have one for uh, my work, and I also have a personal one for my uh, business and also for my travel, right? So I did a whole video on the AMX, uh, Amex Platinum card, right? So, yeah, so as soon as uh, I finish mine up, I'm going to get accredited um the hundred dollars back for paying with my amex card i love that card get all the you know the lounge benefits and all types of stuff man i'm not i'm trying to get sponsored by uh amex here uh, very shortly <laughs> i'm working on that one but um yeah it's a great card to have i love it let's see here uh you gotta have a channel what is it? Uh, not trying to mess up his chat much, but I got to know. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Y'all keep it, you know, chat it up. Man, I like to see y'all making connections. Uh, Vanessa says, I travel mostly with my younger sister because she's the only one I can count on to travel to these exotic countries like Dubai with uh, me. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all a story about Dubai. Whew, I love Dubai. Okay. <laughs> Clear program is also free if you have Amex. Absolutely. All that stuff, man. Amex, like to see it. See, yet, yeah, but may launch in July. Yeah, go ahead and do it, brother. Don't wait. Like, uh, was that De uh, Devin the Dude? Don't wait. That's one of my favorite songs. I can't sing. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. So, before we get into these videos, every time that I get a chance to share one of my favorite YouTube platforms, Black Excellence Excellus. I want to say this, and I want to give you y'all an overview in regards to what I learned from watching over 30 content creators who are travel, you know, black women who travel frequently. I went to various websites that black women frequent, such as Travel Noir. Um, let me give a shout out to Travel Noir Exodus Summit, also Black Excellence Excellus, the Black Experience Japan, and many other travel content creators that I had the chance to review in order to streamline this live stream for black women. So all those places that I just mentioned, they will be linked uh, after I finish this live stream. They did an amazing job of interviewing some of some bright 
young black women, uh, old, young and old, and they were able to convey their message very well to where I can bring this information to you all, right? So before we get started and get to these videos, I just want to give you guys an overview in regards to what I learned oh, you know, overall in regards to listening to these women talk about their experiences overseas. So black women, please pay attention to this, right? So dating and or marriage is not, I repeat, it is not the primary goal for black women when moving overseas. For the most part, they're simply moving for either work, a better living experience, or because they love to travel. So I know that there are some, um, there are some black women that are trying to, I guess, do what the passport bros do. But from what I saw, most of the black women are literally not going over there for to find a husband. If it happens, I, they are open to it. They are dating out there. However, that is not their primary goal. I'm just here to let y'all know. And they'll tell you in these, um, in these uh, interviews that I got from them. So yeah, so if you think that there's a mass exodus of black women that are just going over there looking for husbands, it's not. They're just trying to enjoy their peace. You know, and they're just normal travelers who love traveling the world. They love seeing new things. They love the culture. They either work, they are expats, and they are just simply enjoying themselves, right? Um, and I also have to put this in there. If you're traveling to date or find a husband, you better be a black woman that truly doesn't mind dating interracially. I know it's a talking point in the States about swirling and I'll just date a white man, but overseas, there is no safety net of black men. Uh, in abundance. So you're going to have to compete and you're also going to have to be better than the women of whatever country that you're traveling to. Right. I hope that makes sense. So I just wanted to put that out there. So in the States, I know that there's this narrative that, Hey, I'm going to just swirl. or I'm going to find a, a white man to settle down with because I don't like black men. And I'm not saying that the women on the videos that I have think like this. I'm just um, reiterating the narrative that I see. I'll just go overseas and find a husband. But basically what I'm telling telling you all is that you're going to have to compete in any country that you go overseas because of the fact that most people tend to stay with their own, right? And that's not to discourage black women from finding love. I've already placed videos out there where women went to Italy and they found a man who they're currently dating. There's another young woman who went to Italy and she got on uh, the train uh, the, the train ride that takes you to the various different countries. And she found a guy uh, that she's currently dating. But for the most part, none of these women were really saying about marriage. They were just saying, talking about their dating experiences. So if your intention is to try and find a husband over there, yes, it is doable. It's possible, but just understand that you, you're going to have to compete with the women that are overseas. And there are a contingent of black people that actually are expats in these particular countries but they're not in abundance like in the States. And the reason why I bought black men up, you know, being the safety net, so to speak, is because of the fact that we marry black women at an 85% clip, right? So if you're a woman, a black woman who is trying to go overseas, you're essentially removing yourselves where you're the most sought after, which is the States, which is very simple. But if you had a bad experience with black men and you just feel that I need something different, then hey, try your luck overseas, but just understand that you're going to have to compete with the women of their country and also the women of other countries as well, because a lot of people go to these countries and they're from their own areas as well. Right. So, yeah, so it's just going to be a different level of competition um, when you go over there and you try and snag one of these foreign guys and don't get me wrong. Foreign guys do like black women. There are some foreign men who don't mind dating black women. I've got mixed reviews in regards to the videos that I saw about Italy there was a one young lady who did a video oh, I want to share before I get into these other points. She actually explains her experience in regards to dating in Italy as a black woman. So I want you guys to hear her experience and let me know what you think. Here we go. This comment, it made me laugh a little because it is fair use. So before we start, let me tell you what the comment says. It says Italians love dark-skinned women. Everyone knows that. 
So this is what she's responding to. So here we go. Quite ironic how Italian men have a reputation for liking black women, despite all of the racism that happens in, in Italy. So my first comment about this is Italian men's favorite color is pink, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I actually know several. So real quick, basically what she means by Italian men's, Italian men's favorite color is pink. She's basically saying white women. So from her experience, Italian men tend to prefer women who are pr white presenting, right? So yeah, so she just got that out of the way. And like I said, she lives there, so she would, she would know, right? Let's continue. Darker complected American women who are married to or coupled with uh, Italian men. And I really don't think this is so much about what Italian men like. But what these women have found when they've come to Italy and actually found men who desire them. So, you know, in the U.S., colorism is a huge, is a really huge barrier for a lot of women in dating and even dating black men, black American men. All right. So I wanted to, and this is the part that I wanted to address, right? So she says there's an issue with colorism in the States and particularly with black men. And this is the part where I wanted to reiterate that black women, you will have to compete overseas because of the fact that that colorism that you're talking about in the States, it pales in comparison to what you may receive in other countries. And that's not to discourage you. It's just to help you become aware of what you're going to be dealing with. If your sole focus is to go over there to find a husband, right? You may have some barriers that you may have to overcome that you necessarily wouldn't have to if you were dating in the States, in particular with black men. Me personally, I don't believe that the majority of black men are colorists. I just learned all these words, colorist. Uh, it was some other ones out there, uh, featurist, texturist. I just literally learned these words. I didn't know they were a thing, right? But in the States, I would, I think it's fair to say, or safe to say that the majority of black men are not colorists featurist or texturist, right? But in other countries, you may have to deal with that, right? So that's just something to keep in mind. So let's continue. So coming to Italy and getting like all of this attention from men and Italian men can be pretty. So here you are in this country where all of a sudden men are just like, hey girl, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. And you're in your own country, you don't get that attention. In fact, people expect you to be different and you aren't allowed to just be a woman. And I'm gonna be super honest, like the women that I know who are here definitely have admitted to having difficulties meeting men because they were darker complected in the US. And so I don't really think it's about Italian men per se in like mass, but finding a decent amount of men who are interested and who also allow you to be a woman without like jumping through hoops. Because a lot of times like darker skinned women, especially in the US, they are expected to do more because they don't like people have told them they're less desirable. Uh, all right. So I honestly can't speak on a darker woman's experience in the United States. If there are any darker complected women in the comments, you could let me know if she's telling the truth or not. But me personally, like, hey, if I was to get my fiance, y'all be like, well, yeah, he, it's obvious that he has a preference for dark skinned women, right? <laughs> I mean, it just is what it is. That's always been me. I've never had any bias towards dark skinned women. I've always preferred them. Uh, my crush, uh, don't, I mean, don't tell nobody. And this is my girl you know, outside of my fiance, Kelly Rowland. You know, I've always been a huge fan of Kelly Rowland, right? Um, thought she was a gorgeous uh, young woman. But I've never had that bias towards dark-skinned women. I'm not sure where that comes from. But like I said, she's a darker complected young lady, so I don't want to invalidate her experience. I can't really speak on that, but this is what she's saying. She's saying that the majority of dark-skinned women have to jump through hoops when they date in the United States. But I've just never experienced that. Most of the black men that I talk to, they've never had an issue with dark skinned women. But it seems that a lot of black women think that is, that colorism aspect is out there 
And that may be a, com a conversation that we need to touch on a little bit further. But we also need to touch on the colorism from the other side. I hear a lot of lighter skin women complain about uh, experiencing colorism as well. So I want to know if those things are the same, right? And it typically comes from black women. I've said that multiple times. It seems that black women don't view light-skinned women as black women. And I've always noticed that. I'm like, oh, I wonder why that is. But maybe that has something to do with colorism. But this is her experience, and she's telling it like it is. So I'm going to just lower, go ahead and let her cook and let somebody tell me otherwise. So let's continue. And these women that I have met have found the very opposite to be true since they've been here and coupled with Italian men. But there are some challenges that I've seen. And I'm going to be honest, some of these relationships are not ones that I would have participated in, but they are seemingly happy. And when I first came to Italy, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know that Italian men had this reputation. Like I was actually married. My man stole me from somebody. But I think like the consistency, the them knowing what they want and when they want it, they go after it has made a huge difference for a lot of women. So, yeah, it's kind of a strange, ironic thing that it's true. All right. So she's she's uh, basically speaking on the attention aspect. Right. She's talking about when black women go to uh, Italy they get a lot of attention from men because you are different. In particular, if you're a dark-skinned woman, you are different in that area. So you're going to get a lot of attention. But one thing that I know is she said that she was married. I assume that she's divorced now. But most of the women that I listen to, none of them were married. They just always talk about their dating experiences. And that's the whole narrative that I want to change for Black women who may be going overseas to try and find a husband because I don't see enough black women saying, yeah, you know, I went to Italy and I met my husband. Here he is now. They never say that. It's always about my dating experiences. I'm like, well, we want y'all to get married. That's the whole purpose. If you're looking, I mean, am I off? <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, if there are any women out there that come across this video and you are married to a foreign man, you know, put those videos out because for the majority is just women talking about their dating experience. And if that's all you want, you can get that in the States, right? I mean, you might as well stay here, but I would require marriage just like you would in the States, right? But yeah, but that was her experience in regards to Italy. I just wanted to touch on that based off of the previous video that I did from the woman who met a man, uh, you know, in Italy. And she was saying that black women are well received in, uh, by Italian men because you can be aggressive, you can be loud, you could be abrasive because Italian mothers are like that. I've had a young man in my comment section, Nate Amundsen. He actually debunked that. He was saying, no, <laughs> Italian men do not like loud and aggressive women. Right. But yeah, so that's what she said in that old New York Times interview. But that was her experience from Italy. So just wanted to clear that up for the ladies. So let me get to some of these comments. Oh, we got a lot. I got to pick out some. Hold on. Let me see here. Prime VA 757 said, yep, those countries have very attractive women, especially Europe and South America. Absolutely. Oh, I know firsthand. Good, brother. <laughs> Cerebral Inquirer says, uh, I had to remove that comment. The medium between uh, worlds explained it better. Okay, cool. None you biz. Good to see you in there. Most brothers don't care about the shade of skin color. They just place that on this. Yeah, and I, I've never, I, I don't, and I hate saying this because I sound like, Women, you know, I've never experienced that, but I'm going to be perfectly honest. I've never had friends that had that bias. Like, I don't date dark-skinned women. I, I've just never hung around with dudes that felt like that. And that's why I said coming out of the military after I retired, all this stuff was new to me. You know, featureist, texturist, colorist. I didn't even know those words, right, until I started listening to these spaces and did a little bit of research on them, right? And so I didn't know that there was men out there that, discriminate black men in particular that discriminate against dark skinned women. I'm not saying that it, it may happen or it does happen. I just never experienced it. Right. And most of the guys that I talk to, they respond just like none of your biz. It's like, no, like we don't think like that. And there's been many guys that said that it's not true. So I just, I don't know where that comes from. So I think, you know what? 
I think sometimes they may be experiencing or, or they may be using the experiences of unattractive women, right? Unattractive, maybe overweight women that have an issue and they're saying that, hey, these guys don't like me because uh, I'm dark skinned. But if you look at the person who's saying it, she may be overweight. She may be, uh, I guess, unattractive to most men's standards, I guess, to be as respectful as I can. But if it's that, then that's completely different. You're just getting rejected based off of your experiences, not because you're dark skinned, because there are thousands of dark skinned women that is, you know, have pages on Instagram that are beautiful. Um, I'm pretty sure the Instagram model, um, Bria Mouse. I don't know if you guys know who that is. That is a gorgeous young woman. And she seems to stay low key. I mean, sometimes she naked on there. Don't ask me how I know, but, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that is a beautiful young woman. Right. And I'm pretty sure that she doesn't have an issue getting a guy, you know, and she's dark skinned. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's not me. I mean, let me know if I'm tripping. So Barbara Inc. says, not with me. That's a lie. Give me all. Thank you. Give me all that chocolate. Like, what the hell? Where does that come from? Wait, did I miss yours? Oh, Mona said, uh, facts, none of your business. I never had issues attracting men as a darker skinned black woman. Yeah. Where does that come from? We So we all on the same page. I'm not sitting there looking, looking like a fool for thinking that <laughs> it's, it's not true. I don't know. When she said that, I was like, huh. So. Now you biz, Mona D. I think a lot of them is projecting how they feel about dark skin on us. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Kane says, sure, lady, dark skin women do have hoops. Many overcome them, and people with bad behavior have to jump through more hoops regardless of cover. What's the hoops? I'm glad you put that in there. Let's see here. None you biz. They like dark skin women all throughout Africa. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been to 12 countries in Africa. So uh prime va says serial daters yeah and that's the one thing that i like to convey you know with a lot of women like they always talk about their dating experience but i'm like no it's only counts if you married but i don't think women see it like that right and i'm trying to help them understand like yeah you need to get married we you, you should take no pride in dating a, a foreigner or a white man like make sure he marries you right that should be the ultimate goal i mean if you're not gonna date white men at least get married or black men at least get married, you know, and just don't get used, so to speak. I don't know. Maybe that's too logical. <laughs> now you've been saying they like dark skinned women. Okay. I got that one. Sorry about that. Let me see here. Did I get that one? Uh, dating experience as if dating like men, shaking my head, no lady, us men get that credit. Cause we're judged by who we can pull ladies. You're judged by who you can marry and keep. Absolutely. I'm glad you put that in there. Just to reiterate the point. Yeah, I hope hopefully this makes sense to the ladies. Uh, don't ask me how, how I know. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm just, you know, I may have came across the page a couple of times. Yeah, naked. I don't spell it like that, though. I spell it N-E-K-K-E-T-T. -T. Naked. You got to say it quick. Naked. You know, not naked. I only say that when I'm in professional settings and things of that nature. But here, naked, quick. <laughs> oh, CMB Hustle, they are just dusty and broke. <laughs> that sounds like something they would say about us. <laughs> dusty. That's a funny name. Uh, how they just make up stuff for us. We don't have any input on what we like. Yeah, that's what, when they have these conversations, I really wish that they would just bring black men in there and be like, hey, man, do you have an issue with dark-skinned black women? And I'm guarantee you, you get a hundred black men in there. At least ninety-five percent of them gonna say, "Hell no!" Like what? <laughs> I don't know why these conversations never involve men. How are you gonna have a conversation about what men like with no men there? Like, <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I don't know. Uh, CME also they don't love their fathers. That may be something to look into. Uh, Prime VA trying to be like men and many date. Like the worst of men, yes, yes. Naked, that's my new uh vocab. <laughs> Gotta be quick, quick. <laughs> no, but I I think I was explaining this on Jay Fleming's platform 
in regards to, and I hate to bring this up, but it is fitting for this topic in regards to the divestor movement. And I was trying to explain uh, on his stream, I was like, well, those divestors, they're kind of in the position of a man, right? A man who is being friend zoned by a woman who is basically trying to play the waiting game or trying to convince a woman to like him. That's what stupid guys do, right? When a, when the woman places you in the friend zone and you're thinking that you can stick around and you could tell her nice things and you can, you know, uh, swindle your way into making her like you. That's pretty much what the divestors are doing because of the fact that they had to convince white men that they're, they are better than their female counterparts, right? Because it's not going to be an easy win for black women to go over to white spaces and steal white men from white women. White women are very loyal to white men, right? All through history, white men, you know, all the, the craziness that white men have done, you know, uh, in regards to our past, white women have stood beside them, right? So for a black woman, to come or black women to come into these spaces in mass and steal white men from white women, that's going to be a fight. You're going to have to compete, right? So you're basically trying to convince white men that, hey, you should consider us. We may be at or above your woman's uh, priority level or, you know what I'm saying, our usefulness level. So you should marry us. So they're basically trying to convince these men to marry them in mass. And like I said, I have no dog in the fight in regards to black women saying that, hey, I want to marry a white man. Cool. If you can, do it. But just don't sit there and take pride or take joy in just dating. You know, at least get married, right? And I know there's always going to be somebody that says, well, there's black women that get married to white men all the time. Yeah, there are some uh, black women, but the majority of those women are just women who qualify for all races of men. It's not the fact that they're divestors. It's rare that, I would say that it's rare that a divestor, a woman who openly says that she hates her own kind, there's white men that's literally lining up to marry that woman. And that's what tends to happen in those spaces. They center all their content around hating black men where they're honestly, and like I said, this is kind of advice to them, your content should be focused on showing your worth to these other races of men. And I know that sounds crazy coming from me as a black man, but if let's be honest here. If I'm telling black women who hate black men, you should go, uh, or you, you should stay with black men. You really think that they're going to listen to me? Absolutely not. So if their goal is to marry a white man, I would advise them to change the content up. Stop talking about what you don't like about black men and focus on trying to uh, cater to the white men that you want. Talk about how good you would be to them and leave black men out of it. Because I guarantee you, I, you know, I have so many white friends that they think it's kind of odd that there are women out there that have platforms that's dedicated to bashing their own. They're not checking for women like that. So my advice would be to tailor your content. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, that's free. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, based off the feedback that I get from my friends, like they don't like black women who talk about black men and hate black men. It's not like they're going to come save you like that. It's not going to happen. Right. And also you already got a, a fight on your hands. You know, white men tend to marry white women. I mean, and then after that, I believe it's Asian women that uh, marry white men the most uh, black women. I mean, it's what 4%, 4% of the, uh, you know, uh, black uh, married women are married to white men. So you you got to fight on your hands, right? <laughs> so that's some. Hopefully that helps. So <laughs> Nick, y'all got that. <laughs> they have uh, to have a combo solo to be right. The need to be right, absolutely. <laughs> that's funny. That need to be right. All right, so let me get back to this list. So I thank uh, this young lady for putting that on TikTok so I can read it. So we stopped at uh, the. Husbands and traveling uh, to date are married interracially. So the other thing that I noticed from, the, you know, from watching these videos is that the majority of black women who travel are not interested in shaming the passport bros. And to be perfectly honest, 
they don't know anything about the passport bros, right? Uh, because, you know, they're too busy traveling. I mean, it's that simple. In my opinion, the black women that you see dispar disparaging, the passport bros are women who've never traveled uh, to the, the areas or the countries that they talk about, don't have the funds to travel, and or don't rank highly on the sexual dating market. So from what I've noticed is that the women who travel and love to travel, they don't even know what a password bro is. It's always the women who have probably never traveled out of their home state, their home city, are the women that are just unaware or uncultured in regards to what's going on overseas. And that's why I wanted to make sure that I hit this point as hard as possible. To the women, who to the black women in particular, that are talking mess about the passport bros, you are putting your sisters in danger. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you because there is a large contingent of black women who have been traveling, who want to travel, and they don't have a dog in this fight in regards to the passport bros. They don't know anything about the passport bros. They just love to travel. So if you're a woman who's sitting there talking mess about women of other countries, you're putting other black women at risk because now those women are going to look at all black women as the enemy. And those black women who travel, they don't need that. They don't need that heat, right? It's already tough as it is in the States for everybody, right? So when you go overseas, you go there for peace. So stop messing it up for the upstanding black women who actually travel and live in these places because now you're going to get the women of these foreign countries in an uproar because they think that all black women think like this. And to be perfectly honest, like I said, the women who travel, they don't even know about the password bros. They just enjoy traveling. So leave the password bros alone. Stop talking mess about women of other countries because you're affecting your sisters. And I'm telling you that from a person who cares perspective. I have a lot of female friends, a lot of black women who love to travel. And when I told them about this, they were pissed off because of the fact that y'all talk and mess about these women when they have to go over there and co-mingle with them. So don't put that heat on them. I'm just letting y'all know right now. It needs to end right now because the password bros have done nothing to you off. You don't want to see their content. There's this great thing on YouTube where you can hide the channel or you can block the channel that you don't want to see. But that may be asking too much because some of y'all just nosy and you in these password bro spaces trying to hear what the hell is going on. And when you hear something that triggers you, then you go off, right? That conversation ain't for you. It's for them to uh, help. It, it, they're making other black men aware of what their experiences was when they go overseas or while they're living overseas. That, that, that conversation is not for you. If you don't want to see it, just block it or hide the channel. It's that simple, right? So that should dispel all these conversations in regards to Black women saying, well, they talk too much mess about black women on these passport bro spaces. Why the hell are you there? <laughs> Why are you there? Like I said, and I use this as an example on Jay's uh, show, when I was doing my research on the divestment movement, I had to watch some divestor channels. And when I was done doing the research, uh, YouTube kept recommending those channels. And I was shocked at how many Black women are divesters. So what did I have to do? I had to block those channels. I had to hide them. I had to say, do not recommend this channel because they kept recommending them to me. It was very easy. So if you're a woman who doesn't want to listen to the passport bros and what they're talking about, just block the channel. I mean, am, am I tripping? Is that tough? Right? So that's why I never taught, you know, I never listened to all this conversation why are they always talking about black women and why are they always comparing? Why do you know? Why are you there? It's not for you. So get out of there. Get out of that space. Block it. So <laughs> that's simple. Let's see here. What did I mean? Uh, Frank, what's good, brother? So I prefer to stick uh, to stick to my kind. Absolutely. And that's not, you know, out of the, that that is the norm. Everybody likes to stick with their own. No matter how many times or how many commercials that they push with interracial families. I mean, yeah, it may do something down the line, but as of now, most people tend to stick with their own and there's nothing wrong with that, right? So like I said, if you're trying to marry outside of your race, particularly black women, you're going to have to compete, right? Yeah, just put that out there again. Vanessa said, please don't mess it up. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, 
I'm, I mean, it's coming from the heart, man. I would hate to see a contingent of black women getting into issues because the women who don't actually travel have got them, you know, into some trouble while living or visiting in these other countries. It's crazy. Uh, King says uh, that needs to be clipped up and viral. They are putting black women in danger. Where's the sisterhood? Yeah, and that's what pisses me off. Like, y'all say y'all for black women, but then you go ahead and do foolery like this by talking bad about women of other countries when you know that the majority of black people who travel, they are black women, right? And they live there. So I got some videos for you all to show you know, that black women are literally living in these different countries and they've been living in these countries. So yeah, so it, it's, stuff needs to stop. All right. So let me get back to this. I got to uh, that. And then the last thing that I learned, the overarching point was that the majority of the countries that the websites recommend are very expensive. And you guys are going to see this. And some of the women uh, will touch on that. And being that I've been to the majority of these places, I can tell you this. They are not lying. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to find some sort of correlation between why they're recommending black women to live in these expensive places. And the only one I could come up with is access to amenities that are similar to the United States. So you guys will see a recurring theme for the countries that they recommend that black women uh, live in. Most of them are very expensive, right? And I think they did that because black women require certain things that, you know, these other smaller countries may not have, such as hair care. I did not know this was a huge issue, but there are women on these videos that are going to tell you that, hey, hair care is very important. And so the countries that they recommend that black women live in, they're pretty much all of them are very expensive, right? But it's a complete difference for, for men. But we're just going to focus on the women. But I want to play this video from Black Excellence Excellus. If you guys have not seen this page, it is everything for uh, upwardly mobile black people, right? This page was actually the, the page that influenced me to purchase a house in the location of Texas where I live, in Houston, right? They did a whole video breakdown of where black people are building, black people are living. And this place um, actually stuck out to me the most after I visited four based off of their recommendations. So if you guys have not followed Black Excellence Excellus, it was everything for upperly mobile black people. It has history on uh, rich black families. It has advice for black men and black women. It is amazing. Head over there. So we're going to share this video in regards to the places that they recommend black women and black men. Uh, visit right and i love I, I love their recommendations so without further ado let me make sure i got the right video queued up here we go that black americans are moving to number one costa rica this caribbean country may be small in size but it has so much to offer the landscape is chock full of all inspiring geographical features including rainforests beaches canyons and even volcanoes Black American expats will be pleased to know that one third of the population identifies as Afro-Costa Rican, thus providing an African connection and also a place to discover the Afro-Caribbean culture, food, and music. Number two. All right, I wanted to make sure they highlighted that. Uh, Afro-Costa Rican culture. So yes, there are black people in Costa Rica. I've been there. Uh, I stayed in there for about, I was in Costa Rica for about a week. When I was in the military, uh, it was some training stuff, say that much. And uh, <laughs> it was a, a great experience. Um, there was a significant amount of people who looked like me out there. And it's just a place where black people can unwind. The beaches are amazing. The downtown area is vast. You guys will get everything that you need in Costa Rica. So I'm glad that was on there. It was actually going to be a place that I recommend, um, but I'm glad that they touched on it as well. So let's continue. Panama. Although it's a small country, black expats are drawn to this incredibly picturesque country for its modern infrastructure teamed with a warm climate, peaceful lifestyle, and beautiful tropical surroundings. There is a growing black expat community here, particularly in Panama City, enticed by government incentives, discounts on goods, and low-cost medical treatment. Number three. 
All right. So Panama City, again, I've been there before. Uh, the, the Air Force actually used to have a base in Panama. And uh, right when I joined the military and I uh, got into a particular job, we used to uh, go down there and provide security for um, U.S. dignitaries that was visiting Panama. Um, and I got a chance to go out there a couple times. Right. Panama is a great place. Again, it's in the same along the same lines as Costa Rica. It's very small. However, if you want a place to relax and uh, enjoy yourself. Panama would be a great place. And Panama City, it is chock full of, uh, you know, uh, any any type of, you know, food culture. They have, you know, festivals all the time. The people are very friendly. It is an amazing place. It is very safe, uh, it's particularly for black uh, black people. So, yeah, you would definitely have a great time out there. No, nah, not, not Tyndall uh, Air Base. It was another air base that we used to have uh, out there, Tyndall. Was Tyndall's in uh, Florida? That's in um, the the upper part of Florida. Yeah, that's the upper part. Yeah. So, but yeah, we we had another base out there. Let me see here. So let's continue. Three Belize, surrounded by crystal clear Caribbean waters, Belize is unspoiled and pleasantly subtropical. This Central American paradise boasts a stable economy, long history of democratic government, and a strong respect for human rights and the environment. Belize is an excellent destination for black expats who want a simple life surrounded by beautiful natural attractions. Number I know you guys are seeing a recurrent theme. You see all these beaches and uh, just this amazing scenery. Uh, I've never been to Belize. The first time I actually heard uh, Belize, somebody talk about Belize, was actually on a Rick Ross uh, song. He mentioned something about Belize. I remember that. So, uh, yeah, um, if you get a chance to uh to head out there i'm pretty sure it'll be nice i was looking at the pictures of the beaches it's amazing so you guys will definitely have a great time if you go to belize i, I actually need to go out there um as well so uh let me see who put that in. yeah howard air force base that was the, the base that the air force used to operate out of i used to know a guy that was stationed there i was only there in passing so um, but yeah, it used to be a nice base from what I heard. When I got there, it was all gutted out, but the airfield still worked. So yeah, it was good times. That was that was a long time ago. I need to go back. So let's continue. Four, Mexico. Although media may often focus on the extreme negative perceptions of the country, black expats soon realize that Mexico, with its blend of Spanish and indigenous cultures, has a lot of beautiful attributes and positive aspects too. There's a thriving community of black expats in Mexico who not only indulge in the rich cultural celebrations, food, dance, and music, but also enjoy the awesome weather, diverse landscapes, and jaw-dropping scenery. Number so they mentioned uh, Tulum. From what I heard, people, it's a lot of people that's been going to Tulum and they've been messing it up with the tourists, you know, the tourist area. So I've, I've been to Tulum a while back, went on a couple's vacation. I had an amazing time. But from what I've heard now, it's kind of getting watered down because everybody is going to Tulum. I believe a ticket from uh, Houston International, the airport here, to go to Tulum and back is, you know, less than $200. Maybe even less than that. I'm not sure. But yeah, last time I checked, it was uh, very cheap. So we have flights to go back and forth there. But uh, from my travels in Mexico, uh, I've been to various places there. I've had a great time. Of course, there's places that you need to stay out of. You need to do your research on that. You can go to travel.gov and you can see that. But uh, for the most part, there are people who actually, black people that live in uh, Mexico a lot. I know Jay Fleming, he actually lives in Mexico right now. So, yeah, you can do, you know, great things in Mexico. I have a great time out there. So that was another place they recommended. Let me get to some of these comments. Uh, I have a lot of family believe stay out of the city. Rush J, tell me a little bit more about that experience uh, so we can have the, the, the information in the comment section. I want to know a little bit more of that. Appreciate that, brother. Uh, identif identify as black natural hair model. Mexico is young. Hey, you should have been here when we was talking about the hair. So <laughs> good to see you here. Uh, the Cerebral Inquirer says, uh, as black natural hair model, hmm, sounds delicioso, this dude. Shoot your shot, good brother. <laughs> Let's continue. Five, Ghana. When discussing the countries that black expats should consider relocating to, Ghana is definitely a legitimate front runner. 
For many black expats, life in Ghana may just be the multicultural experience of a lifetime due to its affordable cost of living, booming business opportunities, low crime rates, and stable democracy. Number six. All right, so I've actually been to Ghana. If you guys watched my video montage before the show started, I actually have a picture from Ghana. Had an amazing time. I mean, what can you say? Like, if you're a black person and you want to be around good vibes and have a great time, Ghana should definitely be tops on your list. And you'll hear more about Ghana here shortly. So let's continue. Portugal. Europe is a very popular destination for black expats, and Portugal sits at the top of the list. Sunny Portugal is a hidden gem in Europe's crown, where the cost of living is among the lowest in Western Europe. The fashionable country due west of Spain is attracting young black expats, particularly entrepreneurs, given its incredible value and welcoming business incentives. Number All right, so little background about me. I was actually stationed in Portugal. However, it was not on the mainland. In the Air Force, we have a base smack dab in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It is called the Azores. It is a series of about seven islands. I was actually stationed there for 15 months, right? So I spent a lot of time in Portugal. I spent a lot of time in Lisbon, the mainland. Uh, that is one of my favorite countries of all time. Out of all 46 countries that I've been to, Portugal ranks in top five. You guys will have an amazing time in Portugal. There is a family on YouTube. I forgot their name, but they are heavy into the investment market. They uh, rely on their Vanguard funds. They give a lot of information in regards to stocks and investing. They actually live in Portugal, a family. You know, they have two kids and they're doing uh, amazing out there. I'm a little unprepared on that. I wish I still had their names, but I'll definitely link it in the description uh, once we get done with the video. But you guys can check out their page and they give you all the information about living in Portugal. I actually had an amazing time. Uh, I can't say anything bad about Portugal. It's one of my favorite countries to go to. So I'm pretty sure you guys would enjoy it as well. Let's see. Let's continue. Number seven, Senegal. Located in Western Africa, Senegal is known for its hospitality and most people are friendly, welcoming, and accommodating to non-local residents. With its modern culture and traditional heritage, living in Senegal offers a good infrastructure and amazing natural beauty. Number eight, Thailand. Tha yeah, I know y'all know about Thailand. <laughs> but, um, Senegal, I haven't heard too much about it. I've uh, heard people say some good things. If anybody has an experience going to Senegal, please let me know. I've been in that area in West Africa, but I never got a chance to go to Senegal. But I've heard great things. I, didn't they just do very well in the World Cup? Was that Senegal? That It may have. I think Senegal did very well in the World Cup uh, recently. But yeah, so I think their uh, country is booming right now, if that's the case. So yeah, they recommend Senegal. So I'm pretty sure it's a nice place where everyone should visit. But I'm pretty sure everybody in these spaces know about Thailand, and you also know how I feel about Thailand. So let's continue. Thailand is the most livable of tropical paradises with strong infrastructure and incredibly low living costs. For years, its warm climate, inexpensive cost of living, and laid-back lifestyle have attracted tourists and Black expats from America and around the world. Number nine, Spain. Thailand. Yeah, everybody know about that. If you guys uh, haven't subscribed to Zoom the Thailand's page, please go ahead and do so. That that, that brother over there is doing the Lord's work. He didn't, he's probably gotten so many black men to move to uh, to Thailand because of his videos. But that is one of my favorite places on earth. <laughs> I've been to Thailand three times and uh, I've had an amazing time every uh, day that I've spent there. Right. So. It's not really much I can say about Thailand. It's definitely in my top five countries. The cost of living, uh, the expenses, you will save a lot of money. It's very cheap out there. The beaches are some of the best in the world. Uh, if you go to uh, Chiang Mai, Phuket area, I just had one of my good friends. He actually visited uh, Phuket too. My brother was actually out there too, and they both enjoyed it. So I'm pretty sure you guys will love Thailand as well if you've never been. Uh, it is amazing. I can't say... I mean, if you want to feel safe, if you want to feel that you can walk the streets and just be a black man or a black woman, Thailand is the place to go. And that goes back to me telling women, stop talking mess about Thai women. 
because that is literally like a sanctuary for black people. We go there to relax and just enjoy ourselves. Don't mess it up, right? Let's continue. Sunny Spain is always a convincing choice for Black American expats who wish to enjoy a sophisticated working life or retirement in a European country. For starters, Spain has beautiful weather, a laid-back lifestyle, and spectacular beaches. It has one of the no schools and self-employment visas that appeal to entrepreneurs, freelancers, and digital nomads. Number two. All right. So you see my video montage at the beginning of the show. I've been to Spain um, twice. One when I had my when I retired in 2019, that was actually on my list of places to go. I went to Spain. Went to two different places. Went to um, went to Barcelona. And then we also stayed on the coast, the marina area, uh, which was like an hour away from Barcelona. And I I mean, hey, it's Spain. The beaches are, are wonderful uh, for the gentlemen. The uh, women are gorgeous for the ladies. Uh, uh, Spaniards, you know, the men out there, they like black women. So you will have a great time out there if you're a black woman. Uh, you get on the beach, you're looking all good, glistening up. Hey, you may get scooped up. You may find your husband out there. So uh, don't skip on Spain. It is an amazing country. Let's continue. 10. Canada. Canada remains a top contender for Black American expats, the most obvious reason being its proximity to the U.S. Other advantages include affordable education, cultural diversity, safety, a stable political landscape, a high quality of life, and its world-famous universal health care system. Yeah, so Canada is pretty much almost like the states. I, I've heard that the people are a little bit friendlier <laughs> from what I was told. I've been to Toronto once. Uh, I was I dated a girl that was actually from Toronto, and she used to come to the states, you know, just pass over or whatever. But yeah, I had a great time in Toronto for the three days that I spent out there with her. And uh, from what I've been told, Toronto has some of the most gorgeous women. She was gorgeous, so I'm pretty sure you guys will enjoy it. You know, for the gentlemen out there. And also, ladies, I was told that it's a melting pot. So I'm pretty sure that, you know, the uh, the men out there may be to your liking as well. So black women, Canada may be a place where you want to visit. You know what I'm saying? Expand your options, right? I like that word, expand your options. So let's get to some of these comments real quick. Let's see here. Uh, Royce J says, Portugal is amazing, but they have a bad heroin problem. Yeah, yeah, some issues, but I'm pretty sure if you don't, do drugs, you'll be all right, but you just got to stay away from the people that do. There is particular places in Lisbon that uh, that is on the Travel State website. Please go visit that before you go to Portugal. But for overall, Portugal is an amazing place. Can't say anything bad about it. Let's see, BLJ says, any bets on Austin move to Thailand? Yeah, that young brother is enjoying himself over there. I see him traveling to uh, the Philippines. Uh, that was one of my favorite places to visit. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he, he's probably going to find his home uh, in Thailand. He seems like he's enjoying himself. I'd love to see that brother uh, videos pop up, man. He's inspiring so many men, young men in particular. It's pretty crazy. Vanessa says, Thailand is on my bucket list. Absolutely, you have to go. <laughs> like I said, I can't say it's really not much you can say bad about Thailand. I mean, it is an amazing country. Like I've, whew, you just feel safe. Let's see here. Yes, uh, man, I thought I have some pictures. Hold on, let me see. Real quick, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, BLJ, hold on one second. I'm gonna pull something up. <laughs> I know I got those damn pictures. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Ah, I don't know if y'all could see that. <laughs> Tapas <laughs> in Spain. So, yeah, I, t I took pictures of them things. So, that's more. Food was amazing. Oh, that's me eating tacos. <laughs> and then that's me being a tourist, of course. So, yeah. It's kind of blurry, but yeah. I got. Oh, about pictures. I got hiccups. I don't know where I came from. But yeah. So uh glad you mentioned that. Ibiza, I've definitely partied in Ibiza. Uh that is uh Ibiza is pretty expensive. So, but you have a great time. If you're a, a young man, uh 
I would say go to Ibiza before you get married. Let's just say that much. <laughs> go before you get married. Brazil too. Uh, the master teacher, I love the channel of content. Uncle D sent me. Appreciate that, good brother. Yeah, you know, like I said, uh, he sends a lot of people over here, so I thank him for that. So let's get to the full video of the places for black women. Now, I want y'all to pay attention. It's a common theme in regards to these places that they recommend. So basically what I did with this compilation, I got various black women to discuss different things about the places that they're living in, right? I was thinking about doing the same narrative and having to talk about dating, but they touch on that. And they also touch on some other things as well. So without further ado, ladies, here we go. Here we go. I got the hiccups. Can you? I ain't had the hiccups in years. Uh, yeah, here we go. Chiang Mai. When it comes to visiting Chiang Mai, the very first question that appears is whether it is really worth the time and effort. It is for sure an incredible place with a modern twist and all the activities you would expect to find in any travel destination. Chiang Mai invites you to its colorful food markets, dozens of beautiful temples, relaxed vibe, and lovely landscapes. As a destination close to nature, it is known for its off-the-beaten path that leads to ancient ruins of forgotten kingdoms with the appeal of moats and canals and having the best elephant sanctuaries in Thailand. In the past few years, it has become one of the main digital nomad hubs in Southeast Asia. Digital nomads put this on their bucket list for a perfect mix of pace, affordability, comfort, and nightlife. So there are a lot of black expats that live in Chiang Mai. Uh, Phuket area, all that, you know, that area is uh, expat friendly. So black women, that would definitely be a destination where you can expand your options. You can get to know uh, people from different countries and you can, uh, you know, just enjoy the uh, the beaches, some of the best beaches in the world. So, yeah, that that'd definitely be a place where you should visit or look into living if that's uh, what you plan on doing. Thailand again for the win for the win. Let's see here. So let's continue. When I went to Korea, I had no intentions of dating. Zero. Honey, I was there for the food, for the experience, for the shopping, for the Instagram pictures. But it is inevitable as a black person in Korea, you will get attention. Since I was there for so long, a lot of my friends were using the apps to make more Korean friends and explore Seoul more. So after a little bit of hesitancy, I decided to make an account and I ended up meeting up with a guy for lunch. The guy was super sweet and such a gentleman the entire time. But I did kind of feel like some of the topics of discussion were a little questionable. I remember. So I put her story in here for a specific reason. This is something that black women may have to deal with when you go overseas. And it's not because they're trying to be racist. They're just curious. Right. I've lived uh, I lived in Korea for a total of a total of three years while I was in the military. I spent a lot of time in Seoul, a uh, lot of a lot of time. You know, in the nightlife, it is a party town. It's Korea is amazing. South Korea is amazing. So like I said, I lived in Korea for three years. But the people there, they're just curious in regards to your background, especially if you're a black woman and you're living there. They want to go They're They're going to want to know a little bit more about your upbringing. And the only way that they can associate that is to what they see on TV. Right. So that's why you guys understand why I talk about ethnic image so much. Because most of the, the experience that they get about Americans is either from TV or from the military members that are there, right? It's a lot of military bases in South Korea. So they are familiar with Americans. But if you're going in regards to a dating aspect, then yes, you will go on a date with one of these young Korean men. They're going to ask you maybe some prying questions that may be a little bit suspect, you know, in regards to the racism act. But just understand that they're just very curious, right? So let's continue. We were hanging out and he we were talking about going out in Korea, what that experience was like. And he was basically just asking me about, yeah, like, how do I like to dance? You know, what songs do I like? You know, do I like to twerk? You see that? Black women? <laughs> you pay attention to that. She, they, she said that she went out on, a, out on a date with a Korean man and he asked her, do you like to twerk? Where the hell do you think he get that from? From what he see on TV, right? So that's why I'm telling y'all, y'all gotta chill. Stop. <laughs> you gotta stop over sexualizing yourselves uh, on TV because when 
foreigners view black women, they're going to go off of what they see on social media, what they see on TV, what they see on, you know, wherever else. Right. So for him to ask her, hey, do you like to twerk? <laughs> he specifically probably got that from social media or from TV. Right. So be aware. Let's continue. And stuff. And I was just like, okay, yeah, sure. Sometimes, you know, twerking happens, but why are we, why are we talking about that? Another thing he mentioned was he really cannot stand, and he brought this up, you know, when people are singing songs and they use derogatory terms like, you know, the N word or something. He's just like, hey, I can't stand that. That's so disrespectful. And although I appreciated the acknowledgement of that, I was just kind of like, why are we talking about this? You know, why is this the topic? of discussion it wasn't anything wrong but it was more so a kind of this idea of he needed to, he felt the need to talk about more stereotypical black things instead of just talking to me like a normal human being would talk to someone that they were on a first date with you know so like i said he was basically just trying to relate because like all he knows is what he sees probably on social media tv and from military members service members right so if he's trying to get to know you, he's going to use examples of what he knows that black people are doing or just stereotypes, as she said. I wouldn't call it stereotypes if we're actually doing the stuff that he's talking about, right? So, yeah, so that's why I always harp on the ethnic image so much because this matters wherever you go in different countries. And I wanted to reiterate, and there's going to be a young lady that says the same thing. When you travel to different countries, they don't, I mean, you're, you're an American first. Black is second. You know what I'm saying? So I know people always talk mess about being an American. And I don't think that ever hit me because I was in the military. I don't want to be sitting there saying that I don't love America when I spent 20 years in the service. Right. But a lot of people still carry that mentality that, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm different. I'm not a true American. I'm like, yes, you are. When you go to these other countries, they see you as American. Black is second. Right. So that's why. This guy in this particular situation, he was just curious and he was trying to relate to her. And I, I don't think she really got it, but I'm just trying to let the black women who see this video understand this is what's probably going to happen. But you can make the determination if he's being a little bit uh, intrusive, if he's getting disrespectful. You have to determine if that's a fact, you know, or if, if he's doing it or not. But for the most part, I think they're just curious. Right. And very, you know, forward with the way they speak. Right. They'll ask you certain questions about your hair. They'll ask you certain questions about, you know, uh, your butt size. You know, I've heard that from some of my friends, female friends, but yeah, you, you, you determine if it's getting a little bit disrespectful or not. For the most part, I would say that it's just being curious, right? Trying to relate. I don't know. Take that for what it is, but it was just, Eh. Now, not a lot of people talk about this, but sometimes dating in Korea as a foreigner means that you will be used for your money or excessively paying for things. And what I mean by that is many Koreans know that foreigners coming to Korea have some sort of money tucked away, some sort of money in order for you to get there. And this goes for both men and women. I unfortunately experienced this on a date in Korea where I felt constantly pressured to cover both tabs, kind of forced to go ahead and pull out my money at the last minutes in front of someone who I couldn't communicate with because I couldn't speak Korean that very well. But the person who I was with said, oh yeah, you need to give this amount. And I would give that amount and they never gave any amount either. Meaning like I covered both of us. And <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say that she got finessed, but I know what I know about the Korean dating aspect. They don't view dating like we view it in the States. Like she said that I had to pay for everything. Uh, for the most part, Koreans don't, date and go to pricey places they just go to like they'll walk you know around the town um they'll go to a small coffee shop uh just to get to know you so for them dating is literally about getting to know you and not as much as you know like in the states where women judge are based their dating experience off of where you take them right and so for her to pay for his dinner so to speak he was probably just like yeah you got this is not that much money or whatever. She may have gotten finessed or not, but from what I know about dating in Korea, they don't view it the same as in America. Like I said, women expect men to pay for everything, but in Korea, it's not like that. You know, it's, it's up to their discretion. So 
Uh, if she got finesse by a guy saying, hey, give this much money, then it is what it is. But for the most part, dating is just to get to know one another. But you guys know how dating is in the States. It's a little bit different, you know, than overseas. So <laughs> let's continue. Um, some of y'all might not find an issue with that. Some of y'all will. I don't know. For me, I kind of felt like you, all you have to do is just ask me. I don't mind covering a tab or a bill for both parties as long as you just ask me. But if you just kind of force the money out of my hand or force it out of me and don't quite explain to me like what it's being used for or that it, you're getting paid from this as well. I just kind of found that a little bit concerning and I didn't enjoy that as much. So that is something to definitely look out for when you are dating in Korea is people who might just be simply talking to you just to make a little bit of money or get a little bit of food or whatever the case may be. All right. So, and that's another point that I wanted to touch on for black women. You, you all have to understand if you're trying to date in other countries, remember, like I told the guys on last or, or last week's stream, America ranks number two in regards to the annual earnings, right? So when you go to these different countries, if you're a black woman and you're trying to settle down or find a husband, understand that you may be the primary breadwinner in that relationship, right? And that is a, a that is a caveat that tends to be overlooked when black women are talking about finding husbands overseas. You make more money than the majority of the world's population on average. You, I mean, like I said, you know, if you're a woman who likes to travel and you guys already understand that most of the uh, high earning people in the United States who travel are women, people, women who make over $250,000 travel the most. So just imagine that woman going on the dating market in another country where they make significantly less than what we make in the States, right? You're going to be the primary breadwinner in that relationship. So please get, get it out of your head that the man has to pay for every date, because if you don't, you know, if you really want to date and find a husband, and these other countries get used to paying and picking up tabs because, like I said, you may be making more than, you know, that guy in that other country. Not all the time, but it's a, you know, highly likely <laughs> that you will be making more. Right. So if that's an issue, then you may need to, you know, stay in the States and try and find a husband. But if it's not and you're just looking for uh, somebody to be peaceful, a husband that's going to you know make you feel good and you're being the primary breadwinner, hey, have at it. Have fun. But just be aware of that, right? Let me get to somebody. I see we got two super chats. Let me pull it. Jay, my man. And I referenced your uh, live stream, bro. Gave you some props. Appreciate that, good brother, for the super chat. Four ninety nine. I appreciate it, good brother. As always, you know what it is. Got my man, Barracuda, with the $5 super chat. Jay Fleming, you had to be lurking somewhere, I see. LOL, I knew it. Uh, another on-point episode. Yeah, appreciate that, good brother. Jay had uh, that fire thousand subscriber live stream. I had to show up and show him some love, man. That's my guy. Let me see here. Uh, Royce J says, Koreans, as with most Asians, have very different social norms. They are very forward with their observations and opinions. Absolutely. I'm glad you touched on that as well. It is. And also, they don't believe in personal space. I was <laughs> So if you're a little bit skittish, in regards to people being close to you, like if you're standing in line for something or just in a crowd or on the subway, they may be close to you. It is what it is. So just get used to it. They're not trying to be pervs or anything like that. It's just how the culture is. So, uh, Reg J said, if you're a woman in the RD, uh, you paying for days. Yeah, like I said, you can be paying. So, a woman from the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Okay, I got everything. Cool. So let's continue. Wait, did I get her? I want to make sure I go back. Well, here I we just go. kind of found that a little bit concerning and I didn't enjoy that as much. So that is something to definitely look out for when you are dating in Korea is people who might just be simply talking to you just to make a little bit of money or get a little bit of food or whatever the case may be. How did you find living in Dubai? Wow, that sounds like America. You see what you hear? She said, she said, oh, you may run into some guys that just want to get a free meal. But don't that sound like the women in America <laughs> using dudes as foodie dates? So now you get the same uh, treatment while you're overseas. But get used to it, sister. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Dubai. Black women, again. 
Only thing I would say is getting your hair done is a bit of an issue, obviously. Hair is important to me. I couldn't find the hair products, which was very frustrating. What did I tell y'all? Hair is very important to black women. And like I said, majority of these countries that they recommend black women go to, they're very expensive, right? So uh, the hair care thing, that is something to consider. I think somebody mentioned, I forgot to read that. I'm sorry about that. But I seen you mention something about deployments and black women uh, struggling while they're deployed because of the hair. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah. Royce J. He said, uh, black female soldiers were struggling on the hair game on deployments. Absolutely. It is very important to black women. And I understand. And this is the reason why I put this young lady in here, because I wanted her to convey her experience by living in Dubai. Right. So we're going to continue with her video. Um, let me see who I got it here. Oh. Oh, no problem. Good brother. You know, I got you. All right. So let's continue. Carl, my man. He says uh, she knows what it's like to be an American man. <laughs> hey, it's gonna be it's gonna be like that. You know, you go overseas as a woman, you're gonna be paying. So let's continue. <laughs> That's funny. Good seeing you, good brother. So if you're coming out, please buy the products in advance. That's my top tip. Buy the products in advance and bring them. And every time that you have a visitor, get them to bring you more hair products. Trust me, <laughs> you'll be grateful. Is there a strong black community? I want to connect with a group. Okay, so I want to put your mind at ease because I know when you go to a new country, you want to see and be around people like you. You want to have like reminders of home. You want to feel comfortable. And there are black people in Dubai. So don't you worry, okay? And I had many friends from all over the world there, but I also had a group of black and mixed race girls, mostly from London. So I always found, well, I found that there was a group there. The good news about Dubai is most people are expats or most people are from different countries. So they're more open to talking to people. Just like when you first went to university, if you ever did, and everyone's really scared when they first go, but everyone's in the same boat, so they want to talk to people. It's kind of similar. You will find it quite easy to talk to people. So I wouldn't be worried about that. There's plenty of events on so that you can go to to where um, you'd be able to meet people that perhaps have similar interests in you. So like comedy events, um, I know they have like Destination Dubai, so that's like a huge influx of like mostly black people. <laughs> they yeah, so like, like I said uh, you know, a while back in the show, if you're an introverted person and you're not open to meeting new people, it may be tough to travel or live in these different countries because you have to be open to that. There are black people that live in Dubai. As I said before, in 2021, at the end of it, I spent two weeks in Dubai. It's one of my favorite countries to ever visit. But like I said, I do not want to steer y'all wrong. It is very expensive to live and stay in Dubai, right? Um, I consider Dubai as my first uh, affluent trip. Let's just say that much, right? Uh, I spent a lot of money out there, but it was well planned out. Like I said, I got an accountant in the house. So yeah, so I spent a good amount of money spending uh, you know, my time out there with my brother. Um, it is an amazing place. Whatever you want to do, uh, you can do it in Dubai. It is, oh my goodness. It, I, I mean, it's not, <laughs> not much you can say. Like it was, it was amazing. I, I mean, I had video from various places when I was in, you know, Dubai for those two weeks, you know, I did damn near everything. I ate at the best restaurants, stayed at the best hotels. Oh my goodness. I had an amazing trip. I'm actually going to head out there again. Uh, my brother, he lives in Abu Dhabi. So I'm going to go visit him uh, this, uh, this travel year. So uh, yeah, I'll get some video for that as well. But Dubai is an amazing place. Hopefully you guys get a chance to get out there, but let's continue with her video. Go from um, London and America that come over once a year. There's nightclubs. There's just loads of stuff, loads and loads of stuff that you can go to. Um, I think there's even spoken word and stuff like that. So just check it out and I wouldn't worry about that. But what I would say is I'd give you advice. Use this as an opportunity to open your eyes and open your heart to different people. Like you're going to be going to a country where you, there are people from countries that you will never ever have the opportunity to meet for. I'd never met someone from Azerbaijan, from Uzbekistan, and I met plenty while I was in Dubai. Is it expensive to live there? Rent, taxes, groceries. 
Okay, and so yes and no. I can only speak from the perspective of a teacher. The majority of teachers in Dubai um, do get accommodation included. So that meant that I never actually paid rent. So rent, I can't really talk on. I do think that it's quite competitive with um, other cities like London and New York. I actually think it's a little bit cheaper than London because London is ridiculous, if you didn't already know, with how expensive things can be. So rent, I can't really say much on. I'm not the best person to ask. Taxes, well, the beautiful thing about Dubai is when you work in Dubai, it is tax free. So that means you are taking home more money than you would be in your home countries. Now I'm saying specifically in your home countries for a reason, because what I am paid or what I would be paid as a British person, because what you're paid is based on your passport, would be considerably more than someone who has an Indian passport. All right, so that's a key uh, point for black women to understand. If you're coming from the US, you're gonna be paid based off of what your passport is. So if you have a US passport, you're gonna get paid significantly, significantly more than other countries, right? Which it sounds kind of crazy, but that's just how UAE works. So for example, like she stated, she's from London. Her passport is from London, but she says she gets pays, paid more than somebody from India. So let's just say they were doing the same job. This young lady is a teacher and she's from London and there's a teacher from India. She's going to get paid more than the Indian person because of where she's from. I know that sounds a little bit discriminatory, but that's just how UAE works, right? So I hope it makes sense. <laughs> Now, if you know me as a person, <laughs> yes, this is something that definitely bothered me. But again, living in Dubai, there's certain things that you kind of have to forego or you, it's, it's, I don't know how to say, um, put this, but it's almost like you have to kind of block out. Otherwise, you just be constantly in your head like, but this isn't fair. But it's how it is and obviously people have chosen to live there and the money that people receive for their jobs is competitive compared to where they live. So what do you Right. So, and look at this young lady. Lord have mercy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, man. Uh, so um, with, with what she was saying, I just want people to understand that when you go to different countries, you are not in America anymore. So you have to... Uh, you have to acclimate to their way of living, right? So if they have certain rules where they tell you, hey, you know, uh, I know in UAE they are not too kind to LGBTQ members. So if you're a person who is an activist or you are LGBTQ, you may have a tough time being in that country. However, that's not to discourage you. I'm just letting you know that, hey, this is an issue because this is the way they run their country. This is not the state's. So just get that out of your head, right? So this young, uh, this uh, next young lady, um, I just want to give a shout out to the brother from uh, Black Black in Japan. Uh, let me make sure. Hold on, real quick. Get make sure I got his his channel's name correct. Black Experience Japan. He's on uh, he's on YouTube. But I just want to commend him for keeping his eyes. Uh, off other things while he was doing this interview. <laughs> this young brother made sure that his eyes stayed looking directly at this young, beautiful black woman who had everything hanging out. But uh, <laughs> it's all right, though. He did a good job of uh, maintaining his professionalism and keeping his eyes up, right? Because it was very tough, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's enough about that. But let's continue this video. <laughs> you do what brought you here to Singapore yeah so I work in marketing okay. in brand and reputation marketing for Google okay, um, okay so I was working for Google at headquarters in Mountain View and then I came over with the same company it's been great being here so she actually works uh, she works at Google she works for Google Google has a, uh, a a building in Singapore and she actually lives there right so yeah Okay. One thing about Singapore is that it's the first time I've ever felt American. Oh, wow. Wow. I've heard this first like twice time. today. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, because wow. the, in in America, you can't be... I've never heard of anyone calling me American. Mm. I've never heard that term. Mm -hmm. If you're only American, if you're white. Okay. Yeah. If you're black, you're African American. Mm -hmm. You're Hispanic American. You're Asian American. Here, I'm American. Yeah. So it was the first time I have ever felt like I'm an American person here. Yeah. So that's a key point, and I just touched on that right before this. You are American. Black is second. I'm telling you. So get that out of your head that you're going to go over there and you're going to experience some sort of racism and things of that nature. Yes, there are pockets and stories. This is just my personal experience and based off of what the majority of black people say when they travel. We rarely experience racism in these particular countries because you are an American first, right? So, you know, if you still trying to, the only place where we get separated is in the United States. Because everybody else sees us as exactly the same, even in the black community, right? I know we have our issues with each other on, you know, YouTube and things of that nature. But once you get to traveling, none of that stuff matters. We all American because I guarantee you, if you see a black man and a black, you know, or a black woman from America in another country, and you guys are in the same area and the same, you know, living space, you're going to become friends. It is it is just how it is. So get that out of your head. I, I don't like America. I'm telling you, you travel, you're simply American. Is that, it is what it is, right? Let's continue. And it like the American comes before being black. Wow. People see American before they see black. But here is clean. Um, it's just good vibes. Like you just walk around and feel at peace. Like I live um, on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. I love living near water. So you just feel like this peace um beautiful nighttime views marina yeah. bay sands the skyline views of the central business district in downtown i just think it's such a chill place to live yeah is there anything about it that you don't like oh yeah um i love the food here but the food can make me very sick sometimes mm. because um a lot of real quick i'm gonna let her finish and i'm sorry i keep stopping this but i just touched on this that's why you go to cdc uh traveler travelers page um She's going to touch on it a little bit more, but like I said before, the health and safety conditions aren't up to par or on the standard of American food and safety standards, right? So that's why sometimes you go to these, these countries and you may get food poison. It's very likely. So that's why I said you put this into practice. Make sure your hot foods are hot and your cold foods are cold, right? And that's for specific reasons, to lower the fact that you don't want that microbial growth in those foods, right? So I'm gonna let her go ahead and finish on that. Parts of Asia, the food quality standards are not quite as high. Okay. Um, and I know I'm in America, there's a lot of hormones, et cetera, but I think out here, especially, um, things don't have to be as clean. <laughs> so it can make you very sick. Um, I think in food, Singapore. food poisoning is like a very, I feel like at my job on a daily basis, someone's out of food poisoning. Really? Wow. Um, yeah. Traveling. So I travel pretty much every week. <laughs> I think I'm in a different time zone like every week. Um, it's been great for me to know people better. I think I have learned more than anything is that the media in America seeks to divide, mm. seeks actively to divide. Wow. Trying to find that balance between like scaling up in my own well being and my own health. Um, so I met my boyfriend in Singapore. Okay. Um, okay. And he so she uh, met her boyfriend in Singapore, but I'm not sure if he's from Singapore because she works at Google. So she may have found either a local or another American or somebody that is who works at Google, but she found love in Singapore. So like I said, black women, it is not far fetched that you can go to these different countries. You can find, uh, you can find a husband, you can find a boyfriend, you know, you can get married out there. But like I said, certain countries that, uh, some things may have to stop, right? In regards to the attitude. Let's just say that much. And also the weight standards. That may be something that you want to consider when you move to these countries as well. Because like I said before, black men are the most forgiving when it comes to a woman's weight standards. I know a lot of black men don't like me saying that, but it is true. It's a lot of black men that consider obese women thick, right? So when you're a, a you know, a bigger woman and you go to these different countries, these men may have harsher standards than black men, right? So it'll be in your best interest. Like the women that I'm sharing, 
uh, all of them are in shape. They look really good, you know, and uh, they can compete. You know what I'm saying? So I would advise you to to be in the best shape possible, be at your best self, and go over there and see what see how you can do on the dating market, right? So let's continue, and then I'll get to the some of the chats and the super chats. He's helping me to find that balance. So um, that's been really nice to have something or someone that takes a part of my life that's not work. Okay. So it's been great. If you are watching. All right. We've got Switzerland, Geneva up next. These are all places where they recommend uh, black women go to Travel Noir, um, Exodus Summit. These young ladies are these women are from Exodus Summit. Uh, this is a website and I'm going to share some pictures here with uh, you all so the black women can understand where they can go. But before we get to this video, let's get to some of these comments. Jay said, foodie call, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, Carl, is this Dubai land of humor, porta potty yuck? <laughs> That's not the Dubai that I saw. So <laughs> I actually had a great time out there. It's one of my favorite uh, places to visit, UAE. Uh, King says her voice sounds like Naomi from the pregame. Nice. All right. I think that's Pearl Show. Yeah. Carl, you fool. <laughs> said, uh, damn, she got that. Yeah, like I said, brother, I had an amazing time watching that video. <laughs> uh, Red Sigma says modern women won't do well in Islamic, Islamic countries. Those at attitudes won't fly. Yeah. Just said that. Like I said, it's they are very, they are far more stricter those men in uh, those arab countries so you have to you're gonna have to get a uh, use of that they i mean the men in the united states are far more forgiving for a lot of things and i was particularly talking to black women so if you go to the uae or one of these uh, middle eastern countries and you're looking for a husband particularly a rich husband which there are a lot of men that have a lot of money in dubai you go to that country and you look for a man he's going to require and demand submission so if you're one of these women that have an issue with submitting and you just want to be a partner and all that stuff you're not gonna last long i'm sorry so so make sure that your attitude is in check when you go to these different countries if your goal is to try and find a husband right uh bad group <laughs> stupid uh, let's see. Okay. No FDA, FDA in Thailand for real. Absolutely. Like I said, and don't get me wrong. The food is very fresh. You know, it is uh, almost very organic. I believe I was watching um, Austin Hollerman's uh, live stream and he was interviewing a restaurant owner where he has, he has a juice bar. And he said that all of his juice bars or the juices or smoothies that he makes, all of them don't have any uh, added honey, added sugar. Is just straight fruit from what they blend and what they get from the country. And that's very rare because in the States, the majority of the smoothies that you get here, they either add extra sugar or honey just to make it a little bit sweeter. So for here, so to hear him say that the smoothies that they make at his restaurant is all natural and fresh, that's amazing, right? So the food is definitely fresh, but like like um Carl said, uh no FDA. Yeah, sometimes you may run into places that don't have the standards, the food and safety standards that we have in the United States. So you may run into a bout of, you know, uh, food poisoning. You know, it's not all the time, but sometimes it, it may happen. Let's see. Roy says you'll get sick too because the food is off the straight from the farms and more organic. Yeah, and it's crazy that, you know, us in the States, we're used to eating foods with various hormones and preservatives in it to where, our body has gotten used to it. And then when it's not there, uh, your body has to acclimate to this new way of eating when you go to these different countries. That's not out of the norm, right? Oh, Jack Frost. Good to see you, nigga, brother. Said, uh, love Singapore returning soon. Absolutely. Let's see here. I got a symbiote. Uh, I'll eat those parasites, this dude. <laughs> that, was, that was a good movie. The first one, I like the first Venom movie. Um, the second one, not so much. I think they, it was too comedic for me. I wanted it to be a little bit more dark, right? It, it just wasn't there. Tom Hardy did a great job, but I just didn't like it being so nice. I don't know. The the uh, it was it wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> so let's continue. So like I said, these women are from 
um, the Exodus Summit, and they're going to explain a little bit more. This is specifically for black women. Like I said, um, I'm going to share some pictures here to let you guys know where you can find these women so you can get on their program. Hold on real quick. So let's watch their video. Watching this now and you are a black woman, you identify as a black woman, go to ExodusSummit.com uh, and you can find out all, all of the information there is to find out uh, so that you don't miss out on Exodus Summit 2023. And one of the things I, I try. So they run this Exodus Summit and it's particularly for black women. If you're looking to travel to uh, various places overseas, it's a pretty much a travel group that gives you all the information that you need as a black woman. Um, these women uh, are currently living in Geneva, Switzerland. So they're going to give a little bit of uh, information on that. And then I also have a couple other uh, beautiful young uh, black women that are going to tell you their experience of living in Geneva, Switzerland. And like I said, these are all places that are recommended for black women, right? In particular. So let's continue. Try to remind people of uh, through the videos on this channel or through whatever platform I'm on is that there is no such thing as too late because I know like I moved abroad at 41. This is, it had been something I've wanted to do since I was 17. And it, it is very easy to look around and say, I'm in my forties. I've been married. I've been divorced. I got kids. Hell, I got grandkids. Um, and say, ah, I think I missed my, my chance. Like I missed mm -hmm. my window. And I'm, I'm so glad that you mentioned that, that um, let that be a reminder to all of us that whatever the dream is, whatever it is, whether it's moving abroad or it's doing something else, um, as long as you are still breathing, there is no too late. That's right. Absolutely I'm, I'm 51. Not. I moved okay. abroad at 51. Okay, there you go. All right, so I wanted to put uh, some older black women in there to give their experiences, and like they said, like like they said, it's never too late. So if you're a black woman who's you know a little bit up in age and the kids are out of the house or an empty nester, you can start traveling. It's never too late. I'm glad they put that message in there. But as I said before, you just need to make sure that you have the information that you need prior to going to these places. That starts with travelstate.gov, CDC Travelers. Um, global entry and also going to the Exodus Summit, right? They, I, I reviewed their Instagram page and also the Facebook page. They have some amazing information on there for black women. So if you're a black woman, no matter how old you are, go to their page and see what they're talking about so you can start scheduling some travel and get with those women that are in that, uh, that community. They're doing great things over there. They were actually mentioned in a couple of uh, reputable sites, I believe in Forbes and Bloomberg. So yeah, um, it's never too late, right? So black women, get to it. Let's continue. These young women are funny to me. Uh, they're uh, pretty as well. So here we go. Dating. How was your experience <laughs> there? Because for me, dating in Switzerland was like non-existent, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like... Anyway, sob story. Well, growing up, none, none of the boys liked me. I was just there, like, yeah. And also, I don't know if <laughs> Luca had that. They still don't like me. <laughs> She's a liar. But yeah, no. So I think dating for me was like kind of non-existent. Mm. I don't know if I was like down with the swirl. No, okay, no, I did. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I did have crushes on white guys. Cause it's just, mostly swirls. Yeah. Around it was mostly like, swirls. Like 99.9 percent. Hey. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. I think like I did. I'm. I'm glad they mentioned that. And like I stated before, if you're a black woman and you you talk all this mess in the states about hey I want to swirl I want to swirl but you really don't your preference isn't white men or men of other races you may have a tough time dating in these different countries because it is a way of life if you want to date in Switzerland it's like they said most of the company or the, the couples are swirl right so it's very rare that you're going to meet another black person another black man in this country so don't be playing around with the squirrel stuff, right? If you're just saying it as a talking point over here, but you really don't like men of other races, 
it's not going to be that safety net of black men to fall back on. Because like she said, the swirl community is heavy out there. And if you, you need to be open to dating other men. So if that's something that you want to pursue, then uh, Switzerland may be the place for you. But it's very small there, like these young women are going to talk about. So let's continue. I have a crush on a white guy, but he was just not interested. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, all right, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, going back, yeah. it's been a little bit better. And I know definitely if you're interested in interracial dating, Switzerland is like the place to be. Yeah. The yeah. Swiss love chocolate. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> she said the Swiss love chocolate. <laughs> so yeah. Thing. So it's like a lot of people who have been coming to me are lots of these men, a lot of these so with this young lady, I'm going to have to fast forward because she was talking very low, but this is the Hong Kong aspect. This is another place that they recommend black women travel to, right? Or live, actually. I'm sorry. Here we go. I'm going to try to find the... Ah, right, here we go. This was a great video. Now, I want you guys to pay close attention to all of the beautiful black women. Beautiful black women that are living in Hong Kong. There is a huge population of black expats i mean over ten thousand that's living uh in in hong kong it may be a little bit expensive but if you work out there you're going to get paid uh for living there right but uh all of these women that sat down and did this three minute interview on hong kong they are gorgeous black women so i love to see uh them representing black women well in these different countries and explaining their experiences so Without further ado, here we go. Black, 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 black. And I'm like, okay. Again, that's another one. She said hair. It is very important to black women. They had to make sure they got places to get their hair done. In Hong Kong, as you can see, all of these uh, lovely ladies here, they have their hair uh, done very nicely, very well. So I'm pretty sure that they can, they can get their hair done. All the amenities that they need are in Hong Kong, right? So yeah, so they mentioned that. The other young lady mentioned hair, so it is very important. So, black women, if you want to go to Hong Kong, I'm pretty sure that all your hair care needs will be well taken care of. <laughs> so, let's continue. Right here. Dating. All right. So, before we get to UK, the final one, uh, that was an amazing video. Black women, if you needed some motivation um, to move to Hong Kong, I think those ladies did an amazing job of selling it, right? So that may be a place that you want to look into. It's actually a place that I'm looking into to visit as well. So uh, yeah, they did an amazing job of selling that. So check out Hong Kong. You know, I think it's a great place for black women. Uh, you will have a community there. You see all those women, they linked up, they found each other. And I'm pretty sure it'll be very easy to find, you know, your tribe out there as well. So Hong Kong may be the place to be. Let's get to some of these uh, comments real quick. Uh, let's see. That's a logical fallacy. Food actually has flavor overseas. Absolutely. Uh, Royce J says, if you stay in many of those countries for more than two weeks, you actually lose weight because the food quality is better. It's the preparation that you have to be careful about. Absolutely. Yeah, and just the cleanliness of the surfaces that they clean their food on. Um, but the food, yes, it is actually organic. I mean, it's fresh. So yeah, it'll taste different. It'll taste better. Um, that's what I love about Thailand. The food was just amazing. Like you could taste every herb and spice and whatever you bought. So Pad Thai, all that stuff, man, it was amazing. Mm. I need to go back. What's <laughs> up? So Keen said, I don't like carnage. I had nightmares of him as a kid. He ate all my food. Worse than the Cookie Monster dreams. You don't take my food. And yeah, the second one wasn't all that. First one should have been longer. Yeah, I I, I, I agree with you 100%. The, yeah, the first one should have been longer now that I think about it. And the second one, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, God, okay, can't say that. Look at these gorgeous black women. Yeah, like I said, they were beautiful. So uh, Vanessa says, when I traveled to China in 2018, they thought I was a celebrity because they rarely see black people over there. Yes, absolutely. They will follow you around. When I went to uh, Shanghai, <laughs> I was taking pictures with people because they thought I was like some superhero or something like that or a famous bodybuilder. And I, I'm probably, I'm on some somebody's wall taking pictures, hugged up with people, women, men. They were literally like men with their girlfriends telling them to go over and take pictures with me. So 
it's an amazing experience. Like Asia, those countries in Asia is, are amazing. You guys, I, I can't say enough about traveling. It's just amazing. So we're almost done here. This is the UK, as you guys know. I spent about 10 days in the UK last year. Well, no, no. Yeah, no, for, for New Year's and Christmas. I was out there uh, in 2021 to 2022, the beginning of 2022. Had an amazing time. I went to five different uh, cities, courtesy of my homeboy who actually lives out there. He took me to all these cities, so I actually got to see so much out there. I had an amazing time in the UK. Didn't care for the food as much, uh, but the experience of just seeing those uh, sites was amazing. So here we go with UK. She's a beautiful young woman as well, too in London as an African-American female. So I personally, this was a whole new, whole new experience for me. <laughs> I think on so many different levels. One, the dating culture is just different. I think dating kind of broadening my horizons a bit on who to date. So, you know, I now it's very common for, you know, african-american women to date anything and everything but back in the day so i was in london around 20 2010 2016 so there wasn't a lot of interracial dating back then and here in the states so a lot of black women were still you know kind of primarily dating the brothers so when I moved over, I, I wanted to be open to dating whomever, and so I was. And to my surprise, a lot of the men were open to dating me. So, you know, that was good. And I I really enjoyed it. All right. So I'm glad she got a chance to explain her experiences. And like I said, black women, I know that the majority of black women have a preference for black men. But when you go to these different countries and you're really trying to find and date overseas, you're going to have to get used to dating outside of your race. But that's not to say that black or London and the UK doesn't have a large contingent of black people. They are black people are from London. They are from the UK. Right. But you're going to get attention from all races of men. So if your goal is to you know date interracially because you're having a tough time with black men in the States, then you might well, you know, might as well want to try your luck with uh, a you know interracial relationship overseas but again like i said be i'm gonna be clear you got to compete there's not going to be anywhere that you go in the state or in a country where you're not going to have to compete especially with their women of their country because men tend to gravitate towards their own and women as well right so yeah so just keep it in your head that hey if you're a good woman and you think that you deserve love and you know and you think that you can find a husband? Just keep your spirits up. Don't get uh, disgruntled with the men out there. You know, just take it, you know, uh, one step at a time. Go out there just to enjoy the experience because, like I said before, the majority of these women did not go overseas to find husbands. They just wanted uh, a different experience. They wanted to enjoy the culture and just expand in their, you know, living conditions in their life, right? So, yeah, so just go over there with an open mind. Have fun. And if you happen to find love, you know, in particular with another race of men, then hey, do what you need to do. But like I said, you may be able to find a black man out there as well. There are some very upstanding black men in all of these countries. So just keep your options open, right? And enjoy the countries that you decide to go to. That's my advice to you all. So let me get to last comments. I got that one. Okay. Keen says, uh, LOL, they better not follow me. I'm going to run. And you know what they say when you see black people running. Hello, you better run too. It's going to be a stampede. <laughs> you fool. Yeah, you know, you a taller dude, brother. So, yeah, you definitely going to have to take some pictures. <laughs> oh, man. So, before we go off here, let me give the Exodus Summit some love. So, this is actually their movement, right? It's called Exodus Summit. This was 2022. Move abroad money, right? For black women. And it's particularly for y'all. And they're partnered with uh, Travel Noir. This is amazing. They're doing a great job over there. They're partnered with Black Sit, I believe. So yeah, here's some pictures of some of their pages for you all. This is the Instagram page, Exodus Summit. So you can go follow them on there. 
and this is the Facebook page. So I'm trying to help you guys out so you can uh, develop a network of, of women when you travel overseas. And like I said before, women travel more than men. So anything that will help you on your journeys, I wanted to make sure that I got that for you and you have a place where you can go so you can uh, expand on your contacts and just make sure you take the necessary steps prior to going overseas, particularly getting the address to um, the U.S. Embassy, you know, making sure that you have all your safety precautions in order and uh, you'll be good to go. I think uh, black women have been doing an amazing job while traveling since you guys travel more than us. And I just want to continue to see that happen, you know, and give you a little bit of insight on places where you may be received uh, well and the places where a lot of black women are going. So there you go. And we also had another one for, uh, they recommend Oslo, Norway for black women as well. My, my homeboy, he just got back from Norway. I asked him for some, uh, some advice and he basically said that um, it wasn't that many black people there, but they recommend it for black women because again, it is very expensive to live out there. But I think that is, uh, there's a reason for recommending the expensive places because black women need a little bit more amenities, in particular the hair. You may be able to find what you need out there. And uh, anything, it may be a little bit closer to living in the States because they may have more stuff for you all to do, right? So Norway is a place where you should check out as well. So hopefully this live stream helps. Um, if you guys don't know, this is actually uh, the longest live stream that I've done because I take this stuff very serious in regards to educating black women and also black men. But I wanted to make sure I gave you guys the respect that you deserve. And I give you, you know, the information that you need to travel safely to these different countries. Right. So, yeah. So hopefully that you guys enjoyed this stream. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to do this and I uh, will be clipping these videos up so you guys can have them in short form as so you don't have to watch the full live stream. You guys definitely showed out in the comment section. I appreciate the support so much. Let me go back and do my thank yous. There was so many comments. I can't get to them all. Everybody, thank you for the super chats. I mean, I'm very uh, a humble guy, you know, when it comes to, you know, you guys giving. So I always appreciate that. Thank you. Danny, my man coming in here. King Barracuda, you know what it is. Appreciate good brother. Keep sending me that good content. Fireman, thank you for supporting. Gene Herb, you know what it is, brother. Glad you got a chance to get on here early. Vanessa, thank you so much. Vanessa is the best. BLJ, you know what it is. Thank you for being the show sponsor with that $20 super chat, man. You the man. Appreciate that, good brother. Let me go down the list here. CME Hustle, thank you, good brother, for tuning in. None your business. You know what it is, bro. Let's see here. Barbara Inc., appreciate that, good brother, for tuning in. As always, Dusty, <laughs> Dusty Nuts, I love that, <laughs> that name. Coming over here uh, because of Dennis Sperling. Thank you, good brother, for supporting the platform. Let's see here. Royce J, man, you was very active. Your insight was amazing, bro. Thank you. If you don't have a page, I, hey, you need to put one up because you had a lot of the same insight that I have from these places uh, in regards to travel, right? And like I said, that's what my Patreon is for, basically for travel and uh, helping people out, navigate the process and you know discuss fitness, nutrition, whatever y'all want to uh, talk about, right? Let's see here. Big boy zero three one five. Uh, did I get? I don't think I missed that one. Army veteran did six years. Been over. Uh, been to over twenty countries and enjoyed every minute. Salute to the veterans. Yeah, man. Like I said, these veterans, man, we've been traveling, so I love to see that. Theo, the man, appreciate that, good brother, coming through. I will be tuning in tomorrow morning as soon as I get up. Uh, BLJ said uh, GS thirteen and two. All right, okay, cool. We know the paychecks kicking, kicking like Bruce Lee. <laughs> hey man, listen to you upset. Let's let's keep that you know on the low. <laughs> oh man, yeah, we getting it out of here, good brother. <laughs> See Prime VA, that's my guy over there. He be in the comment section of various uh, panels that I pay attention to, man. So appreciate. It. Good to see you in here. Uh, God damn. Let me see here. If I missed anybody, forgive me. Like I said, the, the panel was going. X-Men Prime. Oh, I, didn't, I missed that. Is she married to Italian man? <laughs> nah, she, she wasn't, but I think she's working on it. 
Mona D, appreciate it. I'm going to get that moderator stuff going in uh, uh, here to, today. Frank, appreciate uh Franz, I think that's Franz Ocap. Appreciate that, good brother, for uh, coming in. If I uh, said your name wrong, forgive me, brother. Let's see here. The master teacher came in here from uh, Dennis Sperling. Appreciate that, bro. Thank you for tuning in. Jay Fleming, you know what it is, bro. Appreciate it. And then uh, Cerebral Inquirer said, tell him, tell him let me get nine subs. Oh, man, you need to be promoting that. Uh, have you? Let me see. Uh, I'm about to put that on my page. I got you. Yeah, head over to what's uh, is that it? The Cerebral Inquirer, King Barracuda. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll link it. I, I got you. I'll give you some free promotion, as always, brother. You know I got to support you. I'm going to hook you up. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, appreciate y'all. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this discussion. This was an amazing uh, live stream. It was my longest ever. And what do you know? It was uh, geared towards black women, as always. Yeah. He hates black women. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, not at all. So, yeah, appreciate y'all tuning in. I want y'all to enjoy your week. Be safe. I want to make sure that you're healthy. And like I said, I will go ahead and put a quick little vlog up. Um, I'll head to the airport tomorrow to finish up my global entry. And then I'll be uh, flying to a various state <laughs> for work. Uh, and I will be out for the next two days. But I'll make sure I get some video for you all and just give you um, an insight in regards to what a, health, a public health professional does in his daily life. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's going to be a great day tomorrow. I'll be up early. So. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Thank you, uh, Carl, for tuning in. I forgot you, man. Carl, for tuning in. Uh, salute, bro. Great job. Thank you for that. Vanessa, thank you. Good night. And send me some more of them Kendra G videos. And no more 600 pounds. I don't think I'm going to make it in the, in the heaven if I see any more of them videos because I think I'm not supposed to laugh, but it's funny. So <laughs> see, there I go. God forgive me. <laughs> Uh, Cere uh, Cerebral Inquirer says, I be trying. They be all in the IG lives and inbox. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're doing well on IG, so you're going to have to give me some of the sauce. So, <laughs> But yeah, that 800-pound that life stuff, man, I can't watch. I know God is staring down at me like, bro, you ain't supposed to be laughing at this. But <laughs> oh, but let me get out of here. Well, make sure y'all healthy, y'all safe, make sure everything good, mental health is in check. And I will be back on on Wednesday on uh, Patreon for all my subscribers, my Facebook subscribers, and, and also my Patreon subscribers. So whatever y'all want to talk about, we will definitely discuss. And I'm going to be doing a free giveaway from my new sponsor. I will uh, let you guys know what that is on Wednesday during the um, the Patreon uh, live stream. So if you're not a member, please go ahead and hook a, hook your boy up and. Um, join and also you can become a facebook uh subscriber medium and subscribers in my uh, private group and you can get access to these live streams as well i'm going to be giving away some cards from my new sponsor right you guys want to be be in there for that so check that out so appreciate y'all tuning in amazing live stream i'm gonna go ahead and get me something to eat relax catch a couple of these last nba games and i'm gonna take myself to sleep Appreciate it. Y'all enjoy your night. Be safe. Media Man out. Peace. Amazing live stream. Thank you for your support.